Hey, hey, we're back. What's going on on this podcast? We've got Pierce with us, a.k.a. Big Bird, who's always had the Patreon, he's had the Discord, and he's doing shit at PFL. Uh, under our name talk, and likeness, you know. Under our name and likeness. We somehow, some, somehow he hacked into the Instagram and is now posting under our names. He sees who I be DMing. Yeah, he sees all, he's like, history. Uh, and then what... Before we even move on to fights, we can't even talk about fights at this point. We nothing because it's a late night podcast. You know, come away, let's drink your milk. Brandon was like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta break out the bourbon." And That's what like, we do on the late night podcast. Yeah, late and night podcast is bourbon, and then we're giving Pierce bourbon, who's underage. He's actually only thirteen years old. So <laughs> if you're gonna like come at me, then come. I mean, it's fine. I get it. I get it. I'll go to jail. Whatever, but. It's in the um, safety of your own home. It's though, in the safety you know? of my own home. It's better than like out in the street. Yeah. Like we're not going to let him drink and drive. You're going to be drinking and driving while he's a passenger. I have Tesla. Remember? His yeah, while he's drive. an unaccompanied minor uh, in your car, and so that you're going to like double. I'm your not going to sodomize him. I'm just going to take him <laughs> home. Uh, but we got some whiskey. We're drinking it. I haven't taken a sip of mine yet. Nor have I. Nor has Brandon. Uh, Pierce, why don't you hold up your cup? The your one glass. dude who says he doesn't drink. Whoa. The guy who doesn't drink whiskey. I drink like a white woman, so I wanted to do that off camera. But that was a long introduction. But it's look at this. This is, I mean, and Brandon gave him the big glass. We didn't even start it, this the was pod. Like, that was a pour. That was like three pours of, of bourbon. I'm wondering if you're going to make it through. The podcast you know what's funny is i wanted to actually do this exact same bit with tony kelly i was just afraid of the rage that would come afterwards <laughs> thought we'd get real interesting it was very smart that you did not mention that we also do yeah we also do put only if you guys notice like the people we've had on the show all have the exact same political beliefs and so we put them right here oh yeah he's he's maga he's actually going to law school in louisiana yeah. So Tony will stop by. They'll have a MAGA party. It's actually uh, so Wear funny. some white hoods and run around. <laughs> speaking of the mic, buddy. Yeah, speaking of the mic, buddy. First That's time. what it's for. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, I, uh, I, 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 I'm glad we're doing the night podcast. I like the night podcast because I get to wear a watch. If we do midday, I don't really, you know. What, what, why? It's just a little more formal. It's more, well, I come from the gym, right? Okay. So I don't bring a watch with me. Anyway, so nice watch. And, uh, you know, we got the whiskey. Um, I just got this watch, actually. It's a very what nice is it? piece. What do, you, what, do you, what do you got? It's an IWC. Oof. You like IWCs? I love IWCs. Check this one out. You this one's that. super, super nice. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Is that my watch, you <laughs> asshole? How'd you even get that? <laughs> Where did you even... <laughs> That's where your son was like, let me know how it goes. <laughs> that is... Because I, I was gone, so I was out of town. You... <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes, he goes, that looks really familiar. I love that watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the funny thing about that is we were out of town and we were selling our house. It's up for sale. So we had some people scheduled to do some listings. So I've got to watch like case that spins and shit. This is actually how this came about. Oh, really? Because I went to go, uh, I needed some water because I'm not a drinker. And I saw your little like watch spinner, right? It keeps the automatic yeah. time. So I went to go check it out and I see a watch missing. Yeah. So I go to your son and I say, where's the other watch? I know you have an IWC. <laughs> it's a watch I've always wanted. And he goes, well, funny story. He doesn't want anyone to steal it, but I needed some underwear. <laughs> I know where it is. If you want it, blink twice. I blinked twice and I said, this will be hilarious. <laughs> I was going to say, I threw it in my sock and underwear drawer <laughs> while I was out of town because I didn't want random people coming in and taking my Well, my I shit. took it. I'm Mexican. You can't <laughs> trust me in your house alone. But I'm going uh, to Panerai. That's, that's Viva cool. Italia. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're drinking booze. We're drinking what? Cooper's daughter. That's what I gave you two sissies. Because uh, actually, it's like, like uh, what is it? It's like stored. It's finished in walnut Black walnut syrup barrels. I'm allergic to nuts. Am I going to die? I hope so. Um, and then I'm drinking some Maker's Private Selection. That's actually not bad. That's why I gave it to you guys because it's a little sweeter. I thought you guys could handle it. You see um, my reactions anytime we've done the whiskey bit. Yeah. And it's, it's bad. And that's Getting not like me bad. putting on. That's, I just I can't drink alcohol very Gosh, well. Gosh, I love whiskey. Man. Um, I just got back from Saudi Arabia. That was the worst like time of my life too many sheiks too many feces too much feces too much sheikis i got delayed going there so i was supposed to leave monday got flight got delayed 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 and then canceled 
And then, so I wasted my entire day and evening night, got back home at like seven, eight o'clock at night. It was a whole thing trying to switch flights. The next day, same thing, delayed, 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 but we actually got on the plane. So 17, 16 and a half hours of flight time, 20 hours of total time, whatever, we're there. Sleep maybe two hours. I, I was went full fight club. I was sleeping like two hours at a time, and then I would be up for like 18, 20 hours. Sleep for like two, three hours, up for, so I was getting crazy. Then- you still look it too. I look, I feel, I got home last night. So I, I don't even know what plan. I don't even know who you people are and why you're in my house. I called you at like 7 p.m. You're like, yeah, I just got home. Yeah, that was You brutal. left like the day before. So we, yeah, like two days before. I don't even know. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a journey. It's like I had to take a magic carpet ride home. And so I, I, we're supposed to leave Sunday at midnight. And then that got delayed till six in the morning. And we got to London. And then that flight we missed by like three minutes because of the connection. Then got home. It was brutal. There's nothing, I do not care for Saudi Arabia much. This, this trip was worse. The people there are very nice. The people are great, they're amazing, very hospitable, love them. There's just nothing to do, it is boring. I can't drink booze there, it's illegal. But they do have non-alcoholic, like we have a mini fridge, you know, a fridge in, in your room, it's filled with sodas and stuff. And it's filled on the bottom with non-alcoholic drinks. Heineken, tequila, all, zero alcohol. I'm like, that's the only point to drink any of that. Um, yeah, which wow. is weird. Yeah. So anyway, no wonder they never mind. Never mind. Never yeah, mind. Never you mind, never you mind. tone it down. <laughs> so I don't know. I finally got home. Kelvin won. Um, he beat D Rod. That was good. But I got to discuss this a little bit. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> there is some stuff to talk about. Okay. Um, Okay, one of the funniest shits I saw the whole week, <laughs> there was a, I sent it to you in a text message. Yes. Friend of the program, John Gray, he posted, a, it was a, a video of, a, of an elephant getting lifted by a helicopter out of the zoo. Well, the zoo. best is it said actual footage of Kelvin weighing in. <laughs> and then it was a video of Kelvin being lifted out by a helicopter. It was a, a elephant being lifted out by a helicopter. That's fun. And I feel bad for him. He's so nice. And, uh, you know, the whole situation, I think, is bad because you told me he only wanted five pounds, which obviously is not professional, yeah. shouldn't have done it. But then D-Rod was the one that said 185. What, no, I'll explain the whole thing, and we'll get to that in a second. First, first of all, everyone on the planet loves Kelvin Gastelum. He is just, first of all, as a human, I have never seen him in a bad mood, ever. During the weight cut, he could be like one pound away from. He is the nicest. His vocabulary is only about three words, though. It's chee hoo and just stuff like <laughs> he that. He is the most <laughs> like he is an optimistic person. Put me around him any day of the week. Everything can be going wrong, and he's like, "I'm good." It is what it is, and he's just nothing but optimism. It's a breath of fresh air in this industry. Like so many people complain and bitch about Especially everything. Especially the weight cut. I hate life. I, I hate this. He is just like positive. Like he's a guy you want to be around. Now the, like, well, it's not acceptable to miss weight. All right. So, th so that I'm not saying that this is an excuse. I'm just telling you what kind of happened. So you understand the details. Um, first of all, he didn't accept the fight with D-Rod. He never did. He woke up to Instagram and it was on and he was like, whoa, what's going on here? Like that was that. So the reason I say that's relevant and of course it was 12 weeks ago or whatever it was. He got back from Thailand like the day before, or he might have actually still been in Thailand. I forget when he woke up to the news. He had been on a motorcycle accident like a couple days beforehand in Thailand. Oh, wow. Yeah, got like all cut up and scraped up. Got home, was still all cut up and scraped up, but then uh, he got a staph infection from all of the cuts and everything from the motorcycle accident. So then he had staph. And it got bad. It was like three weeks of like antibiotics. It was a lot of antibiotics. It kept getting worse and worse and worse. They had to switch antibiotics. Whatever, that's a thing. So camp is going, this and that. Then he's going, flying out to Saudi Arabia two weeks early to acclimate to the time because he fought on Fight Island and the time was really rough and this and that. He got set up with a meal prep plan and got stuff set up, got a gym, and, and they were all very nice. Everything was great. But two things happened. One, the food Everything wasn't as easy as he thought it was going to be getting there because Saudi Arabia is just a different country. Their concept of healthy food for a weight cut is like healthy food for regular people eating healthy, not this is how you like cut weight. Hummus and, and like yeah, stuff that's just, a lot of calories. and Yes, there was just stuff that wasn't right and he was trying to like whittle his way through. Um, then he got another staph infection as he got no out there. No way, yes. in fight week. So well, actually 
sorry, right before he left for fight week, he got another staph wow. infection. So then he was there taking antibiotics while he was over there, but he had the staph infection. So it's two staph infections. Then the diet and everything was weird. He goes into fight week thinking that he can make up for the week prior of stuff. And he just couldn't, it just didn't work out. It sucks. He should have been lower. A hundred things should have happened differently. But here's the other thing. The narrative that you're hearing everywhere is that Calvin just asked for 185 and that was it. And that's just not true. We asked for a catch weight of 175. Um, and then the next thing we heard is they're taking 30%. The fight's at 185. So um, the details of that, I don't know how everything came to that, but we asked for a catch weight of 175. And then, like I said, the next thing we heard, hey, the fight's at 185. They're taking 30% of your purse. Now, here's the kicker. Um, it's not acceptable at all to miss weight. People have done it to us, and we've lost every time uh, we've fought guys who have missed weight. Um, Frankie Sines did it with uh, Jonathan Martinez. Yep, yep. Um, JSP did it with uh, David Onama. Grant Dawson beat Mark Madsen. I hate it. It's unacceptable. This happened. Whatever. The other thing, though, and people don't realize is this might have actually saved D-Rod's career. Um, he had lost two in a row. If he had lost to Kelvin and there were no issues, there's a good chance he gets cut, okay? Now he got a new six-fight deal. He got a new contract. They upped his pay, and he got 30% of Kelvin's purse. Um, he got paid, and he even talked about it. He was like, I, I'm good. I feel he good. He got paid, and he got a new contract. Look, I'm not saying that any of it was right, but like this, this wasn't the... Look, d -Rod still has a job. Kelvin still has a job. It was a really big fuck up. And we're just, look, it's not excusable, but we are where we are. And that's Happened, the situation. We're moving on. Yeah. yeah I right. feel like that's a testament to Kelvin's ability with all this stuff going in. And he still won pretty dominantly. And I don't think you touched about the, your bathroom experience in Saudi Arabia. The bathroom experience <laughs> was strange. Um, the, the airport in Riyadh was, was the creepiest thing I've ever been in my life. It was disgusting. Um, the people, there was a guy next to us who, who was coughing and sneezing. We were in line waiting to check in, not covering his mouth, just co like COVID coughing everywhere <clears throat> for 15 minutes straight. It was the most disgusting thing on the planet. And he's just coughing at all of us. All, just like trying to get us whatever new disease they found. Um, disgusting people are like picking their nose like people are just sneezing it's not that bad it was just the hygiene of stuff that i'm seeing of people in that airport um and they actually weren't saudis who were acting this way it was actually other countries that i could tell were from different countries i'm not gonna go into that but um it was disgusting people kept like just literally walk there's a line and people all from the same country would just cut right in front of us, just wherever you were at and just didn't even care. Um, but then the, the, the airport itself was just, it was dirty. It was gross. It was grimy. It was gross. I didn't want to sit on the seats. I didn't want to do it. Then I go to the bathroom and I walk in and first of all, so you walk into the bathroom and there's just like 20 sinks. All right. You go to the left and there's like stalls. You go to the right, there's urinals. First of all, so I don't get this. You guys might have to like in the comments, you got to help a brother out. You go to the left. We'll get to the weird part in a minute, but you go in the stalls. All right. All stalls. They have toilet paper there and then they have like a little hose. All right. So you're taking a dump. You wash yourself off. Great. Love it. All right. You're done. You go to the other side of the urinals. They have the same hose there. And I'm like, you never done a urethra cleanse. <laughs> yeah, like we're, we're washing our balls after we piss. Like what? I just, that was like a weird, I'm like, how would you even navigate this without just fucking spraying yourself everywhere? I don't know how you, I, like, I don't, something is missing here. There's like A, B, F. There's some stuff in the middle that I'm not connecting the dots it, here. It's really simple. You just have to ask one of them. I'm sure they'll be happy to show you. The, yeah. <laughs> or just wait long enough and watch and just watch. Yeah. So then are you using that? No, I'm good. I'm just all right, So I'll get to the, even the weirdest part in a second. So I, I go into this bathroom and I'm just changing my shirt. Cause I didn't like the shirt I was in was just kind of uncomfortable. So I changed my shirt and there was like a hotel, uh, not a hotel, air, uh, port worker there. And this dude is staring at me. And so I take my shirt off and this, I mean, from me to you, this dude is just, just staring like, what the fuck are you doing? Taking your shirt off. <laughs> In front of all these people. Maybe he was checking you out. I, and he, you know, he was like, no, he was looking at me like, you shouldn't be doing this. 
I don't know what's going on here. So I'm just taking my shirt off and then I just put it down. I put another shirt. His eyes did not come off of me. I walk out of there and he's just staring me down the entire way. Like, who the fuck do you think? I don't know what. Anyway, I'm just confused. So anyway, so then the weird part on the place where the stalls are at, they have foot baths everywhere. All right, you want to wash your feet over in the foot bath? Cool. Isn't that because of the religion, though? It's because of the religion. Yeah. You've got to pray and wash your hands and feet five times a day. But in the regular sinks, homies are just barefoot, washing their hands, and just plopping feet in the sink. There is water and feet everywhere. I will be everywhere. I'll be real honest. I wish Hawaii would adopt this. <laughs> I have seen some nasty Hawaiian feet. I'm a club <clears throat> foot man. I need a data muzzy, I think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then uh man, anyway, so it's just just an experience. That's all I got. You want to talk fights and, all right, let, and let's UFC do something really, really quick. Um, just because we do have Pierce here. Yeah. Okay, Pierce, I'm gonna tell you one more time and, and talk this. into the fucking into mic. Into the bro. fucking mic. Into the mic. You, you the start mic. into the mic and you, I don't you feel, I feel like I'm being bullied. A little you are being you bullied hundred percent. Yes. That's exactly what we're doing on this podcast. We're going to get you to drop your voice, smooth it out. Yeah. Be not social awkward and uh, talking to the guy. Hey, my mic. son always talks about having autism, which he has, but I mean, you, you just, you, you I might, feel it in the air. Yeah. That's it's all it's a little autism I mean, in the air right now. That's what we got the whiskey for. Yeah. We the, have the whiskey. The soothing oh, autism. but we got to talk before we get into fights. One last thing. Pierce is in town for a couple of days. He was up in Utah, came down. And he's been training. <laughs> oh, we have a lot of bases to cover. I want to get into what, where, how Pierce like started in this and why he's even on this couch right now. This is not a casting couch, it's by the way. It's not a casting But I don't know what here. you think is going to happen, but whatever is in your head Damn, is not going to happen. My night just got ruined. It got ruined, yeah. Um, you but, thought you were getting lick it up, or liquored up and taken advantage of on the casting couch. But, uh, but yeah, you've been training. And uh, you jumped right into the deep end. I wish we had filmed or documented this. So um, Pierce is staying with me. Um, First time ever meeting him, stayed right in my house, could rob me, kill me. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm making a habit of this. People on the internet are always safe. Yep, always safe. I I've done this plenty of times, right? Yep. You know, I just got to make sure I'm probably going to block you when I leave. That's, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Through, who hasn't? Shit comes with the game, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, it was real funny. I did those live streams. So you were gone. I don't know if you know this. I mean, you do watch every podcast. I do watch now. everything. Uh, so times. I did a two-hour live stream. I, dude, it was ridiculous how long that thing was. No, no. Then I did a four-hour live stream. Jesus Christ. I watch along. That's ridiculous. Cool. But I, I got into like just personal stuff, just anecdotes, just vibe and talking shit. Most people loved it. A couple loose cunts didn't like it. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, yeah Pierce is training. here. Pierce is here. He's been training. Jumps into the deep end. Uh, comes and trains jujitsu with me. And rolls with a guy the first time. And he goes, Pierce comes to me, asks me to roll second. You never ask a black belt to roll. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really care about that. And he goes, yeah, he tapped me six times. And so I said, okay, well, then that means I need to one-up well, it. I'm your own. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, how did you feel after? Because you didn't roll again after me, right? Yesterday. No, I, 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 I threw in the towel. Threw in the towel. It was hot. first of all, it's hot in the gym. Well, we were we were supposed to roll. <laughs> and he's like, man, hold on, man. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> that was the last that I saw Pierce. It's very hot in the gym. I want to throw up already. It's yep. very hot. But your first day, uh, a grown man is just strangling you and bending your arms and legs and choking you. And then you have this like dickhead little black belt that does the same thing to you. And then you come back day two and you do MMA sparring. Which was phenomenal. That, <laughs> which was great to see you borrow gloves and shin pads. And go at it. And then a, and a then one you roll one amateur is just putting yeah. it on you. I mean, I, I, I watch Cage Warriors from time to time. I'm sure I can step in there. I mean, step in last minute. And then you ask me to roll. You're like, hey, let's roll before, you know, I, I leave. And I was like, all right, cool. Do you know what I told him actually yesterday? I said, you should ask Santino to roll. He's going to be probably a lot nicer to you than I am. He's going to let you work and just move and maybe catch you every now and then. And what happened? Well, all right. So that was my plan. Like that's generally my plan. I was going to be nice and just roll. And then he goes, right as we're about to start rolling, <laughs> he goes, Brandon tapped me eight times in three minutes. <laughs> you don't so say that's that. the number to beat. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't not be like if you didn't tell me that i i don't care if i tap you once like, if I'm, you make it a goddamn game it's a game now it's a fucking game and i'm competitive i mean i wanted to see who was the better black belt of well we know who is <laughs> like <laughs> well let's roll again you, now there's a new number well so the, the same thing happened yesterday because you're like you know the first guy tapped you what six <laughs> times 
<laughs> well, no, actually, I tapped him six times. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you know, the, the the drink That's is the getting truth. to his yeah, head a little yeah, bit. The alcohol talking. Yeah. <laughs> so then Brandon tapped him seven times. Yeah. I was supposed to roll with him afterwards, and he goes, "Hey, he's like <laughs> seven is the number to beat." So in my head, I'm thinking, oh, "I got to tap." You gotta, you gotta do. It. Then he's like, "Yo, I gotta go throw up." Right. That's it. That's it. Pierce is gone. All right, Pierce out. for the night. Then, after class, he sees me. He thanks me for letting him come in and train. Hey, man, I appreciate it. And uh, he's like, you're lucky you didn't get that rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so now so now I'm like, all right, got you, Pierce. I see him coming to the gym today. He's rolling. I remembered our talk from last night. I'm like, all right. So the, <laughs> all right. Number, the number is eight. Yeah. And so I get to eight, and I'm like, cool, I'm done. Now, I'm OCD. My favorite number is three, and I'm like, nine is three threes. Oh, I'm going to tap him out a ninth. So I catch him again. It's Wait, not, that's weird. That's like some Da Vinci Code that's some shit. weird shit. Yeah, Dude, you're yeah that stop. wasn't even normal. Yeah, this Bro, is Zodiac I'm, I'm Killer just, shit going on you know right what? now. I got but... that from my dad. When I was a kid, I loved basketball. We talked about this, Pierce. And I always try to get number three. And then I couldn't get three. It was taken. So I got nine. And my dad goes, hey, man, there's nothing wrong with nine. That's just three threes. And I was like, yo, you're right. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get him nine times. That's three threes. Tap him nine. And then after I tap him out nine times, I'm like, oh, let's get double digits. I'm like, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm, I'm go for a ten. Then. After I tap him out 10 times, there's like 45 seconds left. And I'm like, hey, Pierce, work, work, work here, man. I give him the armbar. I'm like, hey, take this. I'm like, armbar me. And, then, and we, we just flow, right? From You're such a good guy, man. He goes, armbar. Then I'm like, hey, take my back. Sink in your hooks. All right, lock in the choke. All right, boom, good. He taps out the rear naked choke. Then I go in his guard. I'm like, hey, slap on the kimura real quick. He didn't know how to do it. So I walk him through it. He, he gets it. Boom. Bell goes off, right? He lays back and he goes, I tapped a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's he's the kid that gets bullied oh and then goes gosh. to the boy and goes, "You hit like a bitch." <laughs> hey, he tapped his hand on me three times. That's hey, it three counts. Taps? That it counts. counts. All what, right. What is funny though is your fucking knees and toes look like you just like you got. I'm no a motor. war victim. Man. Yeah, you look like you're in bad shape. You're gonna be. You're gonna have staff all over. Yeah, easily. Well, I hope you use the peroxide. But um, Pierce, okay, so we finally got you here. Um, I, I want you to tell us where you came from because you joined our Discord. Um, a, a long time ago. But let's make this shit quick. This intro is like 75 minutes long. Oh, the people I'm like bored a long already. intro. Let We're me tell you gone. after the two hours. I know, yeah. Let's We're make it quick. But um, I just want to give a little background on you. So you joined the Discord a long time ago. It was a telegram, um, it was a telegram a before we were even oh, doing it. So yeah, that's funny. So actually, I had an issue with him. Uh, <laughs> I remember this. Because back in the day, this was before you and me did anything. Yeah. You stole my whole swag because I was running a free telegram. It was free. Anybody could join. And my one rule is like, hey, guys, the picks are free. Don't worry about the picks. But if we win, you donate. And I'm not going to tell you how much. It could be a dollar. It could be a thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. Fair. That's it, a fair. Out of the generosity of your heart for the hard work I put in, reward me. And I was making a killing. On a winning week, I would make like three grand on tips. It was amazing. And so I remember we had won one week and I, uh, he was the only one who didn't tip me. And I was like, I was, he goes, do I really have to send money? And I said, bitch, you're in this for free. That's the whole point of this thing. Yeah. And he's like, oh, all right. And I got like a $5 tip from Big Bird. And I'm like, uh, well, it was $20, but you know, I've been, hanging, <laughs> I'm I've, been counting. I've been hanging out with the fight ready Jews. They're, they're, they're telling me what to do. So um, after that, we moved over to the Discord. You signed up for the for the Patreon, the Discord. You've been a member ever since. And so I, I know, you know, in the past, you'd been driving DoorDash. And how did your gambling luck go then? Wh what changed everything for you? And then where are you now? Well, and how have you done? Well, I was a college student at the time. And the DoorDash funds, you know, they were originally, they were going right into the gambling. I like it. And let's just say uh, me and Camuela's uh, $1 parlays weren't going so well. <laughs> and... Hey, man, speak for yourself. <laughs> it wasn't going so well, but I was, obviously the more time I'm around Brandon and people like Santino, I listen to them do like the breakdowns and stuff. And it like I started to learn more and realize what what am I doing? I'm doing this wrong. And then I don't know. He seems to like he hasn't matured out of this, but I've realized parlays are not it. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, that was a horrible story. There was a cooler part to the okay, story. Okay, okay, I'll tell you the cooler part. So this was last year, last November. Is this what you? Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. Sorry. And Brandon texts me like he normally doesn't text me that much, but he texts me out of the blue. He's like, "Pierce, you need to go fly to a state that has DraftKings in it." And next thing you know, I get one of my because I wasn't twenty one at the time, so I was kind of OCD about it. So I get my friend. I'm like, "I'll pay for your trip to Denver, Colorado." And we fly there for the weekend, which was really cool. And we bet on this BKFC that he just gave me all the picks. And I'm like, all right, I'll put a couple thousand dollars down. 
turned it in the 20k that night and the funny part is i realized i could have just drove one hour up the border to Virginia <laughs> the whole time. but th th this is just like <laughs> I want to just sensationalize it a little bit, the, you know, in the lead up to this, and I had kind of talked about it. So we have a lot of new people to the channel and they always ask, who's this guy? They're talking about me. They're like, who, who the hell is this guy? And I'm like, wait, I'm like half the channel. Like it's, yeah. I'm half the guy. You, you're half the thing. You're the thing. But leading up to that, right. I'd always talked about my farm in Argentina. And I always say like, not to get like weird and like kind of like stupid now, but it was destiny. I was going to win the money no matter what. We all knew it. Like I had told you guys, like I'm buying my farm in Argentina. There's no, no one that can stop me. So I called my mom and I said, mom, get on the plane. I'm going to make you rich this weekend. I promise you. And I didn't do that the weeks before. The other weeks was me experimenting, testing on my own. Yep. But that week I was like, mom, no, no, no. This is the one I told everybody. I was like, guys, there will be no turning back. Gabe, didn't, or Kamala, didn't I tell you too? Yeah, no, it's true. He's like, he's like, dude, I'm telling you, this is the one. So I actually put more money down that night than any other bet. But ever. it still wasn't much because if it, no, no, it still, it still wasn't much. If you knew that it was gonna hit, you would have been like, Dad, I need a loan. Yeah, but dude, I remember I tried to put a ton of money down, and I was in Montana with Hunter, and my buddy here put money down for me, but I asked him to put like five or 10 grand down, whatever it was. And he, he was like, no, I'm not doing that. Cause I don't want the taxes. I don't want this. I don't want that. He ended up putting gosh, a thousand on yeah. one bet and maybe 500 on, on another one. And it still ended up hitting like 18,000 or whatever yeah. it was. I forget, but I was like, dude, like just do it. And he's like, I, I'm not like, so he put what he put down, but dude, I told my sister, <laughs> I told my brother, I told my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, yo, my boy, Brandon is very confident. I'm Do like, it. throw some money down. All of them made money that night. It was written in the stars. But so where I'm getting back to and not because, you know, I talked about this a little bit because yeah. people were, were asking. But the <clears throat> only person, the only person to trust me enough to buy a plane, two plane tickets and travel and do this and trust me was Pierce, was Big Bird. He was the only one that listened to a stranger on the Internet say, buy a plane ticket. I could have been setting him up to rob him blind. You should have set him up to rob him blind. I'm, I mean, why? Yeah. <laughs> but, take a kidney. Yeah, he was the only guy to trust me, made 20 grand, and then you took that 20 grand and you turned it into something spectacular. Your bet MMA tips is like a ridiculous amount where they keep thinking you're cheating, deleting your account, and you have to start a new one. Your ROI is crazy. You make really, really good bets, and you've become uh, kind of the, the, the student becomes the teacher. Yeah, I mean, I – not to glaze you guys too much, but I thank you guys for the platform that you've given me because it's like at the end of the day, I'm not really here to make money off of anybody. That's not really the type of person I am, but I want to help everyone else. And I feel like I've kind of jumped into that role a little bit where like the Discord, obviously, there's a lot of people that are new to it. They aren't as familiar with Brandon or Santino or what we all do, but if I can just help someone turn like $10 in the $50 or just $20, just change their day, make them more happy. That makes You're me passing happy. on like what, what we did yeah. for you. Now you're passing that on. And mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that's. That's just a way to, to live life is pass it on. I love it. All right, let's do some fights. Let's do 303. Uh, you guys got to carry me quite a bit on this. I, I'm going to get into more film for, for the Patreon. I was doing a lot of 303 stuff leading up to it, breakdowns, putting it on. And then I just hit a hit a wall of delirium as, a, as everything caught up to me. Speaking um, of 303, um, Erico Denver, Tracy Cortez headlining. Well, so she's not headlining. So originally... So Rose was – Missy Barber's what? out. Co-main. Yeah, Missy Barber's out. It, initially, we thought it was the main. Um, I, I think – I forget. I don't know who I, – I do know. But Three I'm, rounds? I, it is. I know who's headlining, but I don't know if it's announced yet, and I don't want to – It's yet. Cannoneer and, uh, and uh, someone else. Yeah, I, so – It's out there. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so she was supposed to fight Miranda Maverick the following week at the Apex. Uh, she got the call uh, to fight Rose. A week earlier, we actually said yes to a five round main event, and then they actually bumped it down uh, to co main. Wow, so it's and it's th three rounds, three round co main event. Huge difference. Big That's difference. amazing. Big yeah. difference. Uh, it, you know, she was at first when she called, I was like, man, I don't know. Just I like the fight, but five rounds in Denver and like just the altitude, like that just is a scary thing to do altitude and two more rounds on short notice where, you know, not crazy short notice. It's not like three days notice, but three weeks notice. And that altitude's a bitch. It's a big altitude's thing. crazy. And Tracy is just a fucking gangster. And she goes, coach, she goes, I see what you're saying. She goes, but I don't want to just be a fighter. I don't want to just do this and be in the line. And when I get my shot, I get my shot. You always tell all of us 
when opportunity strikes, you need to jump on it. And this is an opportunity. I beat Rose, a former champion. Like that puts me in title contention. I, I don't want to just be a fighter. I want to fight for a title. I want to take a risk. If I lose, who fucking cares? I lost to Rose, a former challenger. She's like, but let's go throw our balls out and like fucking go. And I was like, damn. Like she was like, let's go do it. Let's go take a risk. And uh, I actually told her, I said, like she, she's, you know, went on a little bit more and it, it was even a little bit more impressive than that, what she was saying. I said, man, if I had some guns, I would shoot them in the air right now. Like I was sold. Like I was about it. She was like, she's like, I want to go fucking make a story. And I was like, she ain't no PB, done. man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm insanely turned on. Let's get these fights started. So, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. We got UFC 303. Um, it, man, motherfucker. That's supposed to be Conor McGregor. We're not watching Conor this week. This should be Conor McGregor. I am so sad. He's my oh, uh, birthday I, buddy. July 14th. We're birthday oh, buddies. Oh, man. Quit talking about yourself. I'm talking about Conor. I see myself a lot Gosh. of him. I want to watch Conor. I mean, they did put on some good fights. They did put on some good fights outside of the Conor one. In the place. Enough out of you. Jesus. There's no invite this guy. Get, what, out, get of out of here. The only good consolation is that we've got Ortega and uh, Diego Lopez. That's actually going to be a good fight. It doesn't have the star power of Conor McGregor, but I'm actually really interested in that fight. They should have moved Peyton Talbot to the main event. Yeah, uh, we're in. Put Peyton on. I should have worn the Peyton shirt. All right, let's get going. What's the first fight of the night, Mr. Producer? All right, we got Ricky Simone, minus 250, and Vinicius Oliveira, plus 205. Hey, uh, Pierce, you're the man of the hour. Go, give us your thoughts on this. Yeah, first. so I mean, I feel like a lot of people have similar thoughts on this matchup. I mean, when you look at Loke Dog or Vinicius Oliveira, I mean, he's a very entertaining fighter. Who doesn't love this guy? Like Brandon says, we like these guys that have aura. And, you know, this guy Vinicius, he just finds a way to win. But, I mean, you talked about it on the Patreon for a lot of the people that saw it. But when you just look at this matchup, it's like Ricky Simone is just so much more disciplined. He makes less mistakes. And... It just feels like in this fight, he has a lot more paths here, where Vinicius is probably, I would say, KO or bust in this matchup. He's just, when you look at like the Sopaj fight, which is who he fought last, it's like you look at Ricky and Sopaj, and I feel like Ricky's just a better version of the guy Vinicius fought last, and he's less likely to gas out down the stretch. But, I mean, we see the odds on this. It's like minus 250 uh, Ricky Simone, which I can't say I don't disagree with, but... I don't know. I just I don't know about you guys, but I have a weird feeling that it's too good to be true because I see a lot of people on Ricky and well, he has the back class, he has the skill, and he's less likely to make mistakes. Vinicius just has this thing about him where he'll just pull shit out of his ass. I guess is the best way to say it. Okay, so you're going Ricky, or, or are you going Vinicius? No, I'm, go I'm going Ricky. Okay, like, on paper, Ricky should mop him, but I have a weird feeling about this fight. So you're gonna be okay. Big Steve and just not pick one. Yeah, we're going to respectfully pass. Okay. <laughs> All right. Brandon. Um, yeah, I, I, I looked at this one. So I love Ricky Simone. Ricky Simone's grappling game is phenomenal. Not to talk about myself again, but he saw me do the far side, and he was like, that's what I'm doing now. It was cool. Um, Ricky's awesome. His grappling, I think, is, is phenomenal. Just um, his guillotine defense, I love that. I took that from him. He's awesome. Um, his reshots are incredible. Somewhere along the line, Ricky stopped wrestling. And that part was what drove me crazy. And so when he fought Mario Batista, <clears throat> I was big on Mario in that spot. I kind of just knew I'm like, man, Mario is a very good black belt in himself. He's really good at scrambles, really good at getting to his feet. I think cardio wise, it's not going to be close. And then hands like I think Mario is so much better in this matchup. I love Ricky Simone. I love Ricky here. And, and here's the reason his striking is weird and awkward and kind of boxy. But he fills the space, and he is solid, and he throws leg kicks, and he can mix in the wrestling at any point, and his cardio is good. His chin is good. Everything about Ricky is just a solid, solid fighter, and I do like Oliver. He, he's awesome. He's fun, um, but he's always off balance when he throws his shots. He's always like random looping punches. He has no takedown defense. Um, he slows a tad bit, probably more than Ricky. Um, strength of schedule. There's just so many factors here that I would just give with Ricky. I think it's a good bounce back spot. And I think honestly, if, uh, if Oliveira wins, this is just like, why do we even tape anything anymore? You just always go on aura and not on tape. Yeah. I, I think Ricky should be minus 400 here. Like I, I think uh, I like him a lot in this spot. The 
two biggest things here because you guys already touched on quite a bit. And you know, if I was going the other side, I would you know, fight a little bit more and explain a little bit more, but you guys said most of it, two things here. Well, three things, one cardio. I mean, just Ricky's cardio and pressure and pace is will break Oliveira If he doesn't win, Oliveira has got to win round one, or he doesn't have a shot. Um, not, he doesn't have a shot, but shot definitely fades quite a bit. Um, but the, the two other things is that everything Oliveira throws is kind of one offs and it's big. Everything he does is just such a big looping hook and everything's so big and powerful and he doesn't set stuff up. And, Against a striker, somebody's going to trade with you. You can go chin for chin, and let's say let's throw our balls out and see see how it lands. You do that, Ricky's just going to shoot under you. I mean, it's just you're you're sending him a telegram like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw now. You can shoot under me whenever you want." So I I think that's the the reshots, the takedowns are really going to be there. I think it's going to be an easy entrance as it goes. Uh, and then we've seen Oliveira after a little while, he'll play on his back. Um, that's not a way to win fights. Typical Brazilian. That's yeah, it's just not a way to win. So. Uh, for that reason, Ricky no. Simone. Okay. All right, cool. Next up, we have Ray Saruya minus 470 versus Carlos Hernandez at plus 360. Can we get you to go first on this one? I know you have a very hot take. Yes. I, uh, um, I am not sold on Re. Like people are, and I, I think, I think he's fine. I think his striking is really rudimentary. Um, like his, it's, he's not a comfortable striker. Like he's but it's not bad. It's not the worst ever. I didn't say it was bad. I said it was rudimentary. Um, but his chin is up. He's he's reaching away from punches. He's not a guy who's comfortable throwing his hands. He's not. He's not afraid to throw. I guess you could say. He's that. not afraid to throw. I mean, everyone at that level's throwing. Mm. Um, but everyone at that level's not as confident throwing. It, it's here's the thing. When you get people who aren't comfortable throwing, they just swing. They swing. It's almost like close your eyes and just swing and, and hope the dust settles. And that's kind of what he's doing. It's not like he's closing his eyes, but that's the analogy. Um, and his jujitsu is not amazing. It's not like he's like. That submission that everyone went so crazy about was such a fall into it kind of submission. Dude, like you're so lucky. I, I'm not sold on his jujitsu game. And then um we talked to I, I talked about this on the patreon a while ago rinya nakamura is it nakamura is that his last yeah name? he's he's sick rinya is a wrestler he's a fucking real wrestler u23 champion that dude is amazing re soraya they say that he was a junior olympic uh, on the junior olympic team um dude i cannot unsee him shooting face down head down on those doubles where he's just and, and he does have some good shots. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think his re wrestles are better than his shots. Yes, I think it is. And he, here's the thing: is like Carlos Hernandez is not amazing, but he's good everywhere, and he has good cardio, and he does all of the right stuff. And his his submission defense is pretty good. Um, I, I man, like, look, Hernandez. This is a spot for re to win. They want this. They want – the Japanese are, are making a bit of a comeback in MMA, and we're, we're starting to see some more in. I don't think it's him. And I think – look, he could – he's a lot bigger than – Hernandez should be like a 103-pounder. He's tiny. He's not that small. He's tall. He's the same height as He's 5'7". He's That's tiny. super tall. He's it's tiny. It's very tall. Um, and But, man, he has volume, and he throws. And if he gets taken down, he gets back up, and he's a wiggly son of a bitch, and he has good cardio, and – the other thing, this is a UFC 303 in front of a massive crowd. Watch Re like wrestle his fucking balls off, and if he doesn't win in the first round, that adrenaline is gonna be there. I, like, there's there might be a dump. So, I I like Hernandez for the um for the for the big 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 upset. I just I I don't know, man. I I just I don't think Re's a bad fighter. I just don't think he's a Rinya knockout. Now the he's first person you ever said on this podcast put your house on it was carlos hernandez can we um can we get a, a a close-up on him can we say put your house on carlos hernandez listen you guys <laughs> real talk uh carlos hernandez was fighting victor altamirano and i knew in my heart <laughs> there's no way he was gonna lose that fight so i post on instagram I posted everywhere. I said on the podcast, I said, you guys bet your house. If you need to, you take a loan out, you put all of that money on too. You need to go into as much debt as you can possibly get and go all in. 
And he actually messaged me or messaged you or messaged, <laughs> yeah, he I messaged, he messaged me. <laughs> you and was like, yo, this is a lot of pressure. Like, he saw that. He saw it and was like, yo, this is like real. Uh, and he won. So now you have two houses, bitches. Put it on the line this time. I'm not going to say that it was a close split decision that, you know, it's probably the worst decision I've ever told people to do. We still got the house. That's but all that matters. We everybody got, two houses, got baby. their house. <laughs> So anyway, uh, what do we got? Uh, Pierce, what do you think about this fight? Do you think I'm stupid? I am stupid. Uh, respectfully, I think the whiskey's getting to your brain right now. I mean, he hasn't even drinking any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he probably had some behind closed doors yeah. before we got here. I'm but taking shots. I, I mean, I think you're a little harsh on Ray. I mean, when you look at this matchup, it's like, I mean, Carlos, he's very scrappy. I don't think he's a bad fighter at all, but I feel like the UFC's just been doing him dirty. I'm not sure if it's his management, but this dude's run in the UFC has been a bit tough for him. I mean, you get Tasuo Tyra, Alan Nascimento, and now Ray Saruya. It's like, I don't know what they got against this guy, but the issue is, I think I've been very high. I know Brandon probably heard me spoke about Ray. I bet on him in both the road to UFC fights uh, going in, and I honestly think the Mark Clamaco fight is a very impressive win when you look at him. Um, I mean, both guys' careers, I feel like Ray has the better wins of the two. I mean, I'm sure you can maybe agree as well. The way he just outgrappled Clamaco, I feel like he's a very good regional fighter, and I mean, when you look at this matchup with Carlos, it's like if Ray gets him down, I feel like he, yeah, his wrestling, you say his entries aren't the best, but he scrambles well, and I feel like he's somewhat. Wasn't a Mark fight where he is, like, hitting him in the back of the head? And was that it was that the fight Jenna or the fight Shui before fight that? Yeah. It was, like, a premature stoppage. Yeah. Know? But Mark is, like, he's a very good fighter. I mean, he gives every all the flyweights on the LFA regional scene, like, a good test. And Ray clear, I mean, it was a close fight, but he controlled him, which not many people can do. And I, I just can't help but think Ray is going to probably hit takedowns. I mean, I'm not confident saying that he's going to finish Carlos. Carlos is a tough guy. But, I mean, I honestly think like. I mean, around two and three of that fight, I feel like he faded a lot and maybe. got hit a lot. I mean, he even he, got dropped in what? The third round was it that he got dropped uh, in that fight? It is a weird knockdown with like, like a knee. But, like, he, yeah. I mean, he wrestled hard for 15 minutes. It's not like he gave up on himself yeah. in that fight. He showed good cardio. And it's like, I mean, Carlos is all right. I just think Ray's just different. And I feel like he's going to rise to the occasion. Okay. I'm sold on both arguments. I mean, I heard from both of you guys, and I'm like, man, it, it's hard for me to formulate an opinion on this one because I, I look at everything that Carlos is, and I love a lot about Carlos' game. He's high volume. His striking is legitimately pretty good. I, I know that uh, Tyra hurt him pretty bad, but his striking is pretty good. He's a very educated striker. He's constantly throwing volume. The one thing that I think we all can take from him just as, as fighters in general, the second that he his his butt touches the mat, he's... <laughs> up and out and he does that all the time his stand-ups are really good they've gotten really good i couldn't hold this little fucker down he was just so uh, elusive and and just the crazy movement so i definitely see that argument and you're right ray his striking it's a he's southpaw and kind of throws like a, a left hand to the body to wrestle and then he'll throw one up top to wrestle and it's not like he's putting combinations together it's not walking guys into punches he's not setting things up it's a means to an end to wrestle and the tough part when you're when you're talking about a minus 500 is one does he finish him and uh, i mean alan nascimento is, is a good finisher that dude has got great jiu jitsu and so is uh tyra tyra and both massive for the division they're huge for the division um ray's probably pretty big too i think he's a decent he looks size big. but you know, I, I think those guys are, are really good finishers. Carlos is hard to submit. Carlos is hard to pin down. Carlos is hard to knock out. And I, I don't think Ray is going to knock him out, right? So we're taking that one off the table. Okay. Now, do we think he's going to submit him? Maybe. But that dude, again, falls into some weird, crazy submissions and, and weird stuff. So could he? Maybe. But then we're talking about what scores, what wins fights. It's damage always. So if Ray holds him down for four minutes and then Carlos gets up and starts piecing him up, and Carlos can because Carlos puts combinations together, minus 500 is not going to be a ticket that you want to see. So, um, man, I, Coach, I think I'm going to join you. I, I think I'm going to go Carlos on this one. But I, I think the value could be on Carlos outside of like a first-round finish. Okay. All right, cool. Next, Andre Arlovsky, plus 200 versus Martin Bidet, minus 245. Uh, why don't you go, Brandon? Yeah, should we go back down the line? <laughs> yeah. I think I like Arlovsky here. I know he's old as shit. I know he's super, super old. Um, Bidet is a leaner, 
and he's heavy, but he's slow and he's wide and he's not a great wrestler. And Arlovsky, for as old as he is, man, he is super veteran. He has a great jab. His movement is awesome. Chin has been his only issue, but Waldo, who's young and Dominican, he couldn't knock him out, right? He couldn't put him away and finish him. Do we think Boudet has got 15 minutes of cardio like Waldo does? I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think the, the number is super wide for a guy that just got his ass beat. I honestly could see a, a vet performance here from Arlovsky just jabbing and moving and jab a typical Arlovsky win. But I think he's so much faster than Budai. Uh, like, I don't know. I just, I, it's hard for me to get a, one here because the alternative school of thinking is Budai walks him down and hits him with a big clubbing <laughs> shot. But man, Arlovsky is so good. I get he's old. I'm going to Arlovsky on this one. Mm. I mean, I feel like the physicality and clinching of Budai could maybe, if he can get a hold of Arlovsky. That, physicality, dude's been on steroids for 40 years. That, that is fair, but I mean, he is one of the smaller heavyweights, but I mean, I'm not going to get too in depth on this. Heavyweights are the bane of my existence. And he, uh, you try watching it and making sense of it, you just can't because a lot of these guys aren't necessarily the most technically sound. I don't think Boudet's that good of a fighter. I mean, he's physical, he can clinch, and he kind of wears on guys. But Arlovsky, like you said, he's been doing this for 20 years. He finds a way to, to point fight decisions and win over the judges. So, I mean, I can't hate that. I mean, Bresky, Lucas Bresky, we saw that fight with Budai, which was a horrible decision. He should have won, and Bresky's one of the worst guys in the heavyweight division. Yeah, Bresky was out striking him like it was nothing. And, I mean, Arlovsky, who's to say he can't just jab and low kick at distance and just win a 29-28? I mean, it's plus 200 at the end. For me, I had to think about, like, okay, I had a bet on Budai against Bresky, and Bresky clearly won that fight, and Budai got it anyways. How would a, a fight with Bresky and Arlovsky go? And I'm thinking Arlovsky blows him out of the water. Bresky's horrible. So that that was my decider on that one. So that's why I went Arlovsky. Yeah, the thing with Bidet is he's a uh, – you said he's a pusher. And he's actually good in the clinch. I think he's best in the clinch. He, he's, he's he's a heavyweight, so of course they have powerful hands, unless you're Arlovsky these days and then you just touch. His strength of schedule – sorry, really quick. His strength of schedule is also amongst the worst I've ever seen. Yes. You've got uh, Bar Chris Barnett. You've got – Bresky, uh, you've got Collier. Like these are not the top of the top of guys. Uh, but Boudet, is, he's going to push. He's going to push the pace, put or not the pace, but push to the clinch. Um, and then he has good knees. He has good knees in there. And he, but the thing though is the way to beat Orlovsky these days is to swing to knock him out. Orlovsky's good in the clinch. Like he can clinch. Like he's very good there. Where he's not good is in the pocket, swinging and going. Look, man, a, a stiff breeze could knock Orlovsky out. Like, dude. And if that happens, then it happens. Outside of that, which is with an Orlovsky fight, it's a strong possibility. You put a 115-pound woman in there, she's got a 62% chance of knocking Orlovsky out with a haymaker. Um, outside of that, I don't think I see Boudet winning. Uh, I like Orlovsky, like you guys said, with the jab and move. And honestly, in the clinch, I, I like him in the clinch. I, I think I think that saves him. I think that's like, he's just going to hang out and turn him and knee and find little scores, separate and then jab three times on the outside. And, and it's a, a 29, 28, 30 on two cards and a 30, 27 on a card or something. Like I that. wish Boudet, uh, I was confident he could push a 15 minute pace really clearly. Yeah. And I'm just not. Otherwise I'd say, yeah, he's just, he's going to, no, he can't though. He's got an eight minute pace. And then he's, he fades pretty significantly too. Arlovsky's a guy that knows how to fight. That's yep. that's the thing I like about him. Uh, all right, let's move on. I think we're all on the the A train over there. You went uh, Arlovsky. You went Bodai. No, I oh, went. I think Arlovsky's the side okay. of these odds. But is this a put your uh, your house on it type of bet? Absolutely you not. You shut your whore mouth. <laughs> all right, next we got Michelle Waterson plus one fifty four versus Jillian Robertson at minus one eighty five. I'm gonna start on this one for nothing more than you guys know. I didn't tape the shit. Uh, but I love Jillian Robertson's grappling, so I'm going there. All right. And I'm going to agree with you. I didn't tape this fight. I don't give a shit either. And I like Jillian All Robertson's right, grappling. All right, Brand Dan. You're, you're the only you, one doing work around here? You're the only one working. producer doesn't come in. You guys don't tape fights. No. I, I, we had a funny thing because Pierce came to my house, right? He's a tech guy. As you guys could see from the live streams, I'm clearly not. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I come downstairs and he's got his mouse pad on the couch and he's, he's like computer is hooked up to my, my TV watching on a 75 inch. Um, it's just hilarious. And me, I'm like barely doing film. I'm like, ah, oh, I get it in the morning and I do, you know, I get my film done, but I actually did take this one. 
I think I like water sitting here. Really? Okay. You guys listen to Brandon. Like my, don't. He doesn't like Julian Robertson's grappling. I guess. No, I love her grappling. I think her grappling is awesome. I think her wrestling is not so good. And she fought Pollyanna Viana, right? Her whole new thing is like she's at Goat Shed Academy, and they're running her through the ringer. And her and Eileen Perez are so dope, and they wrestle now, and they're Cuban kind of. Do they twerk? No, they they're Cuban because they get Cuban in that. Ne- okay, never mind. Just, I'm sorry. Just yes. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, um. But at the end of the day, her wrestling still is not good. It's li- her wrestling literally just consists of a head on the outside single leg, which is just a weird thing for someone who's a jiu-jitsu person to just be doing all the time because that's how you get guillotined, right? And, and she doesn't run it amazing. She just is dog on a bone with it. And Watterson can get taken down, and if she does end up on her back, I think she's in some trouble. But she has good balance. She has good hips. She has good sight. And... As of late, I've been more impressed with her striking. You know, the the old uh, memes of her just like how many unanswered strikes to the air she would throw. It's one of the funniest things ever. But then you watch the, you know, the Luana fight. Uh, what is her name? Pinero. Um, she threw down. I thought she won that fight. That was a great, great, great fight. So on the feet, I mean, I give it to Watterson. I, I think Watterson's a much cleaner striker. Um, and then it just comes down to can she defend the wrestling? And I think she can. One thing I'll say about Jillian though I'm going to play. And again, you guys, I didn't watch tape of this shit at all, but um, we fought her before. We've watched tape a ton. Who fought her? Oh, Courtney Casey. Okay. Wait. Yes. And I advised against it and I was overturned and then I got yelled at because she got choked out and I was like, bro. She just ended up on her back and could never get up. Yeah, and I was like, dude, you got to get up because she was <laughs> going to lose a decision if she played off her back and she ended up getting choked out. But I'd rather her, I'd rather anybody like, look, if you're down two rounds and you're losing the third round. Go out on your shield. Go out on your shield. Try and get up and lose and get choked out versus just lie on your back and, and lose a decision, which we know is inevitable anyway in that situation. So I, I, I'm for trying to win. Um, but she will shoot head on the outside single, run it. But then she'll also take the back there as well. But then the other thing that she does uh, is she will shoot, pull half guard, and then find these half guard sweeps. So I, I kind of I, – I just – I'm not saying – Look, I, I didn't tape Michelle Watterson at all, but even if Jillian is on her back, she has this weird jujitsu MMA-ish stuff where she finds her way up She's on She's really top. good. She's a little roly-poly, even yeah. how she did with Miranda Maverick, and yep. I know she lost that fight, but constantly she was using Kazushi and coming up to the top, and I thought that was really cool of her. I, I, you know, if I'm Watterson and I'm sitting her down and I'm filming for her fight, you just don't engage in the grappling. Anytime yeah. it goes there remotely, no, no, we're just going to stand up. Like, just avoid it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, this is not one I'm like, man, yeah. no, for sure, Watterson. No second mortgages, guys. No second mortgage. But I, I think she has a good shot here. I like the number. I like the value on this. Okay. Uh, next up, next up, next up. Next up, Brandan's favorite fighter and by far the biggest favorite on this card, Peyton Talbot, minus 1,600. What? Versus Yanis Gamori, plus 900. That dude is so sexy. You got to go, Brandon. You got to go first on a Peyton Talbot. Well, you know. Um, I ordered some shirts, some merch from him. Wait, even before you go, because okay. the UFC is pushing him. They have him. Dude, he skateboarded with Tony, Tony Yes, dude, I was going to say that. He's on, like, dude, they are pushing him hard. Have you ever seen his videos that he puts together for his fight camps? No. They are, you take some acid and you watch them. Incredible. The editing is, like, next level. It's hilarious cutaways. So a bunch of old shit you would probably appreciate. It's awesome. I really love okay, it. Okay. I'll send me some vids. I, I, we're going to have to. I'm going to be honest. I think Brandon just likes anything paid in tall, but yeah, no, but so. no, no, but these are next level. And honestly, Kamola even has like a video producer editor. No, I'm, I'm going to have to check them out. It is unbelievable. The timing, the music, the All actual right, footage, okay. and he's just doing stupid shit. He's like a high schooler, just smashing eggs on people's heads and shit is great. Um, I, I don't think there's a lot to say here. I mean, Peyton's the truth. He's the number for a reason. Really, I mean, this kind of fight, it's like a boxing fight. It's its the method. Um, you know, the line set at one and a half, I think it's going to go over one and a half. I, I think, uh, you know, even in MMA, it takes two guys to fight. And Simon wanted to prove a point. Like, no, 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 I'm the guy. I'm here to bring the fight. Let's go at it. Junior Cortez went all three rounds with Peyton. Um, you know, a lot of guys have. And, and he's usually a slow cooker and gets him in late in round two, round three. Victor Aguirre has no wrestling. I'm sorry, no uh, striking at all. Went three rounds with him. So I think I like the over here, um, Peyton, but I think I'm, I'm going to take him by knockout too. Did I, I don't even remember. Did I say that in the write-up? 
that uh, I I liked the over because I think he won't engage. Yeah. Okay, so I, I thought so too. Yeah, we, we had the write up. Yeah. I was no, but I don't remember if I did or not because I I know I was like, this is stupid. What are we talking about here? Um, but I thought I did because I I, I think the same thing is it. You said it. It takes two people to engage. What are you smiling at over there. <laughs> yeah, you got a cookie. Hey, and that's a homemade cookie from Kindle, which is supposed oh, to be some weird, yes. separate, like weird, long recipe where they've got a set for a certain amount of time, and you're supposed to slightly. Is this some kind of mind control? And... Before she leaves town, she leaves you cookies so you don't forget about her. Yeah, I mean that's what. It's nice. Dude, I would take that deal every day, right? These uh, are amazing. Not to say that cookies are more valuable than than Kindle, of course, but eh. but if, if she's gonna leave, right? You might as well leave. Well hey, babe, I booked you a yeah. solo trip. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't think he's gonna. I don't. Whatever the hell, uh, Gamori, Sodom and Gamori over here. I don't think he's going to engage. I think he's gonna try to wrestle and then not get struck out. You know, like I don't know. Yeah, I'm with you, hundred percent, Peyton. Over one and a half. I almost just something just said something insane. So, um, what do you Pierce. think on this fight? And then go ahead. I, I think Peyton Talbot's mom is a very beautiful lady. And with that being said, I think Peyton's going to get the job done. And I do agree with you guys. I think Gamori is going to try his best to run away, try to point fight his way to a fifteen minute decision that he's just going to get beat up. But yeah, Peyton over one point five. I honestly think it might go to decision if I'm being honest. Hey Pierce, okay. you don't talk about women much, but you just brought up Peyton's. Yeah, mom. we do you want to explain that a little bit yeah. more. Can you go into that? We just. Oh, uh, I, I I think Brandon knows exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, his mom, I think she's fine, but I'm openly, openly into older women, well, especially yeah. with melatonin. Well, you, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> melanin. <laughs> I mean, you you openly told me you would consider. He likes, he likes him tired, <laughs> tired and dark. That's Cosby, bro. Come uh, on, unaware and uh, oh my god, the only way that they accept me. Well, you did openly tell me you would consider a night with Peyton and his mom. Is that correct? I seen a video like that one time. Just, I don't know. <laughs> No, but let's just say um, I don't know her Instagram, but if you go to her Instagram, it's I mean, actually a really famous. She's Instagram. a pole dancer, I'm and she's really? a plastic surgeon That's also. Funny. She's got His money. mom is a plastic surgeon. Yeah, she's super <laughs> smart. They're like rich kids. Like it's what? awesome. All right, next. He up, lives a dope life. Like, all right, I. Man. I'm actually getting a belly tattoo so next week. <laughs> all right, next up we have Charles the Crown Jordan <laughs> minus 118 versus Jean Silva. Hey, which camera can I show this picture into? Okay, let's let's see this picture. The crown. This is kind of he's kind of got a sexy body. Let's see that. I don't know if you can see this for the viewers at home. Oh, it's not. It's, it's it'll yeah. just be me in the background giving a there thumbs up. That's the thumbnail for this video. Okay. Yeah, I mean he's got uh, a sexy yeah, body. To re yeah, we're good. Um. But as far as the winner for the fight, I really wanted to pick Jordan because I know there's a lot of hype on John Silva and he's a little bit of a crazy ape idiot. Um, I, I don't see it. I was hoping that Jordan was a lot like his brother. His brother's striking is incredible. I talk about him every time. He's so freaking good. Jordan's kind of a noodle. Jordan's not like jab and move so well and he's not, you know, just like slipping every punch, slip and rip. He kind of like jabs and then crashes the pocket and then throws a couple body shots and then he's back out. And I, I really just, the way that I see this fight is, is Silva's going to walk him down and he hits hard. He counters hard. The fight with Nathaniel Wood was bad, even striking. And yes, I think Nathaniel's faster and crisper than Silva, but, but Silva's got that power. Silva's got power. And he puts the combinations together. He's constantly swinging while other guys are swinging, which I think will be a big problem for Jordan here. Um, grappling wise, I think, you know, <clears throat> I love that, that camp, the fight nerds. And the reason I like it is uh, Baraljo last time he goes, we're called the fighting nerds. We study our opponents and we take the path of least resistance. We're not in it to, to just show well, it. I, I mean, G Gian Silva has a bit of the tism, so I don't know if he's... He's the runt of the litter. But he he could just bulldoze him just for no reason. Like, I'm well, going to take so, him down. So if you're talking about the fighting nerds and they watch tape, what is, what's the past, the easiest win? Jordan doesn't get up off his back. Okay, but have you seen Gene Silva's fights prior to the UFC horrible, and contender? Horrible. yes. Have you seen him, I think, against a five and six guy trying to take the guy down? It's not great. It's not great. But his fight against Vallejos was amazing. Me and Pierce actually broke down that fight when it was contender series time. And I was like, dude, I'm telling, I, I told him, I was like, dude, I'm telling you, Vallejos is going to beat that ass. And he was like, no, no, I, I like Silva here. I like Silva here. And I was proven wrong. And I think Vallejos is a better boxer than, than Jordan. 
So, there's, so uh, finish up because I okay. Are you, yeah, yeah. Jordan's a more complete MMA fighter because he's got good kicks and and good movement and he's very fast. But Vallejos is young, but he's a he's a much purer, cleaner boxer. He took a round off him, but it was close. And Silva broke him down with pressure and combinations. And he's a big hitter. I like Silva in this spot. Um. So I spent a lot of time watching this film because I was in Abu Dhabi and I was watching it and I couldn't figure out like what, who I liked in the spot. Cause I really, did I, you line it a pick them? We're stop. We're just cut, cut the cameras. We're done. We're out of here. Uh, so I was like, all right, how, cause I like, I like Jordan, great cardio, good guillotines, good volume, does so much stuff. Well, looks like Frenchie from the boys. Like he's sounds like him too. Then, you know, apparently they have the same tattoos. And then you have Gene Silva, who's just this powerhouse, who's just a, a beast of a human, who has so much um, good going with him. He's so athletic. He moves well. His striking is great. His wrestling is not great, but we saw, like, even against Weston Wilson, just blasting through stuff and getting takedowns when he needs it, but pretty much all predicated on timing and explosion and this and that. So I'm looking at this. So then I even had – we were sitting in the room, and I had Eddie Cha – watch t tape with me as well. And I was like, okay, all right, watch this, watch this, watch this. And then, cause I, I, want, I, I was making him watch like fight after fight. And he's like, I'm like, all right, just one more. Just re like, I mean, cause I, I just couldn't quite figure out what I liked. And we're like, man, we, Gene Silva's really good. The issue with Silva in this fight is he, he does, he's off and on. Like he doesn't fill the space. He does a lot of nothing. And that alone against somebody, a vet like um, Jordan, is going to cause problems. So you're already behind on some stuff, just volume alone, if you're not doing anything. And he'll wait and he'll wait and he'll wait. And then he throws these big movements and he does it. On the Contender Series, that kid was, uh, was it Vallejos? Yeah. He was what, 8 no, 9 no, something like He's that? Clean. He's a good boxer. Well, he was, but he didn't do shit. He was a heavy bag. He, the lights got to him and he panicked. He's a much better fighter than what he showed. He didn't do shit. He was just scared and just took a beating. I was huge on him because I thought that kid is really good. Dude, he's very good. He froze in that fight like a fucking popsicle. Like his he first round was good, but he he dumped hard. He faded even the first round, and even that first round was way more competitive than it. Again, I like I was like, whoa, okay. So then he fights Weston Wilson. Who hasn't knocked Weston Wilson out at this Jack point? Jack Asaragi. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh! But so then, and then, uh, am I crazy or did he fight somebody else in? Um, You're that's supposed it, yeah, to fight it. Gomez and Gomez. That's Venezuela. right. That's right. Okay. So, so then it comes down to okay, does he does he take Jordan down? If he does, give me fucking guillotine all day long. Jordan's guillotine is it solid. Is nasty. It is nasty, and then he uses it well to get people off of him. He has great cardio. He has great pressure. Um, I think Silva's got to finish Jordan. Or Jordan comes on hot in round two and three. Uh, I think it's a better live bet for sure. Yes. I really like Gene Silva. I really like him. Um, I don't think he has – I think he does have a tism. That's Probably, not a bad thing though. No, not an extra chromosome but a bit of a tism. But I think, man, just just Jordan's pocket boxing has gotten so much better. His hands are high. He's slipping. He's going to the body. He's pressuring. He's moving. Um, the weakness is is the ground game and him playing off of his back. But he attacks that guillotine well, and generally I don't like back players, but I like Jordan here. And I feel like part of the weakness here is Jordan's kind of an idiot. I've, I feel like in a lot of his fights, his IQ can uh, cost him some fights. It's gotten better over the years, but it's yeah. still not the greatest. I mean, like the Woodson fight, it felt like he was just swinging at air through like 10 spinning back. Dude, that's just too hard of a fight for him. Yeah, he's fought, hard, he's yeah. tiny. If you guys, I don't care what they list him at. I have never seen a shorter person. He's you probably, have never talked about this dude without mentioning this specific Yeah, thing. he's 5'7". He comes up that's to huge. my chest. Like, he has a tiny... He, How many times yeah. are you going to keep saying this shit tonight? <laughs> as many as I can get in. He's got, He could fight at 35. Gene Silva is actually big. Like, he's actually a big dude. So the Woodson fight, dude, he just could... I actually... Who's more cockstrong? Uh, probably the crown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, I, I thought for fighting Woodson, he did the best job that he could given the details. It was Fight, a split, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fighting the guy that big, I thought he did as he outperformed his own abilities to give that performance in that situation against somebody who's just massive and fire in the like how do you fight that guy which is funny because he was a two-to-one favorite in that fight yeah i mean and he shouldn't have been because he's a hobbit 
Um, he should fight at 35. Um, that's my one of my biggest issues with him. But anyway, sorry. No. Besides being Canadian. Well, that's the worst. And having earrings. Yeah, this is actually my uh, one bet on the whole card. So I played Jean, Jean Silva like a month ago or three weeks ago at like plus 170. I mean, my thought process is I just think it's a close fight, 50-50. All right. And yeah, talk a little bit closer. Yeah, you got my, my you apologies. Got, yeah, you got you to point that motherfucker. Look how, look how he's look doing it. it. He's got it's the two like hand this. crank motion. Yeah, two hand. <laughs> it's not like a one hand and done. You got to grab that motherfucker. <laughs> you got to hop to it. Dude, Connor's tweet when he goes, "Yo, has anyone located hot to it yet?" He followed her. <laughs> oh. Try not to think about this microphone as a penis for the rest of the episode. Hey, honest, yeah. Honestly, bro, you're you're good. I have your volume all the way up, so we're still hearing what you're saying. But so yeah. he's just talking shit at this point. <laughs> no, because your volume's no. all the way here. Yeah, I mean, he had to adjust it, but just do your, don't don't overthink it, bro. You're good. All right. Well, yeah, I like Gene Silva this week. I, all right, great. Let's move on to the next one, please. <laughs> I, right. He's got the tism, and he likes to fight, and I feel like his uh, hardware is going to win him this fight. He's just going to keep going. Jesus, hardware. Fuck. We got buzzwords. Man. We got buzzwords for fighting nowadays. Hardware. Dude just got something on his mind. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. Who we got next? All right. We got Cub Swanson plus two hundred against Andre Touchy Feely. Best. Best fight name in the game. Yeah, Pierce, why don't you go ahead and lead Touchy minus, Feely first? Yeah, minus 245. Why don't you lead uh, Cockstrong and uh, Touchy <laughs> Feely? Well, Touchy, uh, he's got not the best hardware, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Would you say it's called? <laughs> Never mind. Software? Yeah, but that wasn't that clever. <laughs> I was really trying. Yeah, this is actually, um, I was talking to Brandon about this earlier in the week. I honestly feel like this uh, line is a bit. It's getting a bit out of hand, if I'm being honest. I mean, Andre Feely, he's a vet. He's a great fighter. I like how he can fight out of both stances very well, and he's got great footwork. But the issue with Andre Feely is that a lot of his fights are, like, very volatile. I mean, this guy's either getting knocked down or he's knocking down his opponents. And while Cub Swanson's a bit past his uh, prime, he's heading towards the end of his career. This dude still wants to fight, man. And I feel like if Cub can – I mean, the issue with Cub is the, nowadays is, like, the kicks. I mean, we saw Martinez and Giga. They both got – finish him with the body kicks and while Feely does a good job with that I, I guess my issue with Feely is that he's, he's kind of chinny and we see this in a lot of his fights where he gets hurt a lot especially the Nathaniel Wood fight which is a good example and I just feel like Cub can maybe stay in his face he's the more durable of the two and if it's going to decision I mean we saw Cub's last fight I don't think he won but he makes he knows how to make fights close and I mean when you look at the odds it's like plus 220 on Cub Swanson right now and it's like he's a vet and Feely's not necessarily a guy you want to trust at these odds so I'm going to pick Cub Swanson to get it done all right, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, Feely fresh off a knockout. And I, I like Feely as much as the next guy, but his punching isn't perfect. And I, I think Cub is a much tighter, cleaner puncher and an ultra. I mean, he's he's got good jujitsu. He's got good standups. He does like fundamentally, he does everything really, really well. Um, th this fight seems like a, a coin flip fight to me. This seems like a really, really close fight. I mean, you can get plus 200 odds on a guy that, you know, just is that good. He's, he's got great cardio. He's got good boxing. He's got good jiu-jitsu. I mean, he just checks every box against the guy that freshly just got knocked out. And I know Cub's not a massive power puncher like like Ige is or anything like that, but I like Cub in this spot. I did not tape this. I just didn't get to quite a few of these last, you know, the fights as they move up the card. This is like a fourth fight on the card. <laughs> well, I, I told you guys, like, I'm going to have to, I'll do more tape and put picks out on, on the Patreon and the Discord later, but just, just in terms of by the time of filming... Um, but Cub, the issue with Cub is he always finds a way to lose. Um, he beat Daniel Pineda, he, you know, which was a, a great win. I think one of his best wins was Dawadu recently. I mean, I thought that was a really solid performance. Even though I thought he lost that fight, just even hanging with Dawadu at this yeah. stage in his career is pretty incredible. Yes. Um, he put away Elkins. He put away Pineda. Um, Elkins just, uh, dude, that. He, but putting Elkins out is a tough task. It was a long time ago, but it's not becoming that tough recently what did elkins just beat and it was like whoa just somebody know. yeah somebody I don't anyway know. so the thing with feely is uh he, if he decides to wrestle i think cubs defensive wrestling has never been great and he will play off his back and he doesn't have a ton of power um but feely does have good power he does have good power and he does have good wrestling and he loves to switch his stances and fire those high kicks um, he's going to have a lot of height on Cub as well. So I think that's going to, he has a lot of height and he has a lot of range. If Cub had power, if Cub, look, 
Cub is clean, but his power isn't there. His speed isn't there. Like I just think his stance, he's so low in his stance and he moves. And so that opens up that calf kick. Um, if Feely watched any tape on him at all, he throws one or two calf kicks and that gets Cub. Either Cub doesn't address it and he keeps kicking him. Look, Feely is no Jonathan Martinez. So like, yeah, come on. So, but you see it, you throw a couple of calf kicks, you see if he reacts. If he doesn't, you keep throwing him. If he does react, that means he's going to bring his stance higher, which Feely loves head kicks anyway. So I think then you start, and, and I might be giving everyone way too much credit here. I don't, you know what I mean? No, Feely I'm is just, good like that. He's getting better too. Yeah. So, you know, then he's posturing up more, the head kicks come, but also the wrestling comes and Feely is not a phenomenal wrestler which is weird because he spent so much time up at alpha male and he's actually back up there doing camps now at alpha male even though he lives in vegas um but he time shots really well and he can when he actually does grapple and gets on top he can actually do a lot of really good grappling we saw that in the nathaniel wood fight that was pretty much whoever was shooting first was winning in the grappling exchanges and and a lot of good stuff was there um without tape without a lot of confidence i like feely here because i think he can dictate the pace i think he's a lot bigger and I think he has the ability to finish more than uh, Cub does. That said, I also, with Johnny Walker and uh, Ozdemir the yeah, other day, yeah. I said, if we're going chin for chin and punch for punch, I like Johnny Walker. That didn't age well. Nope. Um, so, you know, I, I think if I'm going chin for chin and <laughs> Power for power, I like Feely, but <laughs> you know that was about as bad and bru honestly, that was like the most obvious thing in the world that Johnny Walker fight. You're like, oh yeah, the guy that just comically dies at any point is gonna get it's knocked so out. So insane, and and I said this on the write up. I said like he could win, he could do this, he could do that. I said, but in the pocket when people swing, he gets tall and that chin comes up. And oh boy, did it! That come dude up. is like a frog. He's like a f cooking frog legs. Like you put it in the pan and just <laughs> like on the ground. It's just so rigor mortis. Uh, all right, who do we have next? All right, next we got Joe Pfeiffer minus three hundred five versus Mark Andre Barrialt at plus two forty five. People loved me talking about Johnny Walker's dick last week too. He'd be showing dick on TikTok and chatting oh miners and stuff, all kinds of good stuff. Chatting miners. Um. <laughs> well, speaking of minors, Pierce, All why right. don't you give us your thoughts? Yeah. Um, and I, if you need more booze, either of you, there's bottles. I got middle school tomorrow, so <laughs> I got to relax. <laughs> Whoa, nice timing. Is he coming into your own? I like it. All right. No, but I like, I like Joe Pfeiffer in this matchup. I, I mean, I don't think there's much to it. I mean, when you look at Mark andre Barrio, he's a good fighter, but one thing that really stood out to me is how slow he is. And... I feel like against someone like Joe Pfeiffer, you don't want to be slow and keep your head on the center line. I feel like Joe Pfeiffer is honestly going to find the knockout. Yeah, potentially late. We saw Joe's last fight. I mean, uh, Hermanson took over three, four, and five with the calf kicks, but Barry Oates known for his cardio, so I guess there's a path for him. But I mean, pre-fight and just looking at props to bet, I think Joe Pfeiffer KO is honestly a good look. It's like two to one odds on the KO, and dude hits hard, and I just feel like Barry Oates there to be hit, and simple as that. Easy peasy. Does that mean I'm up? Why not? I love MBS. I, I think that dude's awesome. He, wait. MAB. Oh, my MAB. God, Jesus. It's, I'm thinking of Myra Buena Silva's, you know, whatever. But, uh, no, I'm, no, I mean, I'm here. Uh, I love Mab as much as the next guy. But th that's actually something interesting, Pierce, that you said. And I think we have probably talked about this a few times on the podcast. And it's something maybe I disagree with, that his cardio is so good. It's so good. It's so good. He's one of those guys that just takes everybody into deep water, and they fade a little bit more than he does. And he's still there. What? Yeah, he's willing to drown. He's willing to drown. Watch the fight. Who was the, who was the, the Middle Eastern guy that he fought? The guy that was like a crazy kickboxer with all the accolades. Was it a boo? Yes. Uh, is it Azitar? Yeah. Dude, rounds two and three, Mab looks so slow. What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> just, I just picture uh, Ali of Delaziz yelling at Abu, get up, Abu. <laughs> Use your hips. I forgot about that. Yeah, Mab just looked so slow and so drained in that fight. And it's so funny that that was the fight the most that, like, they're like, whoa, look at his cardio. It's incredible. While the other dude's, like, trying to get resuscitated in between rounds, like, can barely breathe. It was, in it was incredible. So I, I don't think his cardio is, is what everybody makes it out to be. He's just willing to drown. But I think Pfeiffer's cardio is fine, too. 
so much was made about Pfeiffer's cardio against Hermanson and the dude survived and he went five rounds and in a three round fight. I love Pfeiffer. The dude hits hard. He wrestles. He does everything well. His jitsu is good. And I, I think I agree with you. I love the KO look from, from him. That dude has a clean one, two right down the pipe. Mab is there to be hit. He got one punch by Chidi. Uh, is that right? Right. by Chidi. Yeah. So he can be knocked out. He had a lot of losses early in his career. He's been knocked out many times before. He's game to fight. He's going to be in the pocket. Um, I, I think this is a nice bounce back uh, spot for Pfeiffer. Do you believe um, the fact that Joe Pfeiffer said he broke Francis and Ganu's record on the punching machine at the PI? Uh, I believe everything I see on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Pfeiffer's issue, which everyone's talking about. First of all, Hermanson. God. That guy is what a just, man. What a man. He's just so under credited with how good he is. He is so fast. His wrestling is legitimately good. Dude, Hermanson's good. I, he's never going to win a title, but he just gets kind of slept on. And I slept on him with the Piper fight. We just. I think we all thought, okay, Hermanson's good, but Piper's just that much better. Yep. Uh, the issue with Piper up till now is he, he was brought up too soon. Is. He came into the UFC. Um, he beat Alan Amendovsky. Then he beat Gerald Mearshart and Abdul Razek Al Hassan. And then they put him in a five round main event against Jack Hermanson. That's a quick push. <clears throat> Dude, that it, it was just too fast. Um Yeah, I mean, Pfeiffer's really heavy on that lead leg. You have to be if you want power. If you if you're gonna fight the way Piper's gonna fight, you you have to be. He's gonna have to address that at some point because people are gonna take advantage of it. Um, five rounds is weird, man. You don't know. Do I push right now? And in round one, he pushed, rocked him, like hurt Hermanson. Tried to go in for the finish. Probably adrenaline himself out a little bit. There's a balance. Like, man, three rounds is hard to balance. You hurt somebody, and do you go in for the kill? Do you take it easy? Do this? Do that? Then he had five rounds into it in a main event against an ultra, ultra, ultra vet. Like, dude, that's a it's a tough thing to navigate when you have three fights in the UFC and you're beating guys in two minutes. I mean that that alone. Pfeiffer is that good. His boxing is really clean. Thing I love most about him is the jab. Um, he throws that one two. And then as he steps out, he throws that jab, which stops the counter. It stops the counter coming back. So he regularly does that. And then he, he you know, throw one, two, one, two, three, throw a combo, whatever you want. As I exit out, my opponent gets a, a turn to punch me. And Pfeiffer's like, nope, jab. He jabs his way out, and that, that stops that. He can wrestle. He can jujitsu. He can do it. Um, Mab, we know is good. He's good in the clinch. He has good elbows. Mab, his biggest thing we saw with Eric Anders is right kick, right punch. That was beautiful. Opposite stance. These two are not in opposite stance. So they're going to be same stance. So that's going to take a lot of that away that he has right there. And Mab's thing, man, is he's square. He's square and he's hittable right down the middle. And Pfeiffer only throws right down the middle. Um, I mean, he'll loop some stuff afterwards, but that jab down the middle. So uh, three rounds. Man, I, I don't think we're going to see a Pfeiffer death gas. I think his cardio is fine. I think he just too big, too soon, too adrenaline, almost hurt him. A million things. He's going to learn from that. He's going to come back better. Pfeiffer. All right, cool. Next, we have Ian Gary, minus 142 versus Michael Page at plus 120. I have a question about this one. Whatever happened with uh, Ian Gary and Colby Covington in that whole back and forth? Did Colby just not want the smoke ultimately or – do you guys know something? Yeah, I don't think he's I don't know. Yeah, I think Colby's like, like nah, I'm good. We're, we're, we're good over You're here. talking. I don't know how Colby – like, Colby was kind of before my time in MMA and betting and watching and stuff. I, I just don't know how he ever – I know he was just a pace, crazy wrestler. He's a pace, point. man. Volume. Volume and pace. But just these days, like, his wrestling isn't insane and crazy amazing, yeah. and it, it's just evolved so much. Like, yeah, interesting. Bad matchup for him. Um, I got like, Ian Gary here. How? How is he going to win? I'm curious. Does that mean you're on the other side of this one? No, I'm just literally just curious to hear your thoughts. So uh, just a few things. Like, first of all, I don't trust a bare knuckler in any sport. If you are if you leap to bare knuckle and then you come back anywhere else, I don't trust you to win. And I, I legitimately mean that because at a certain point, these guys are seeing that contract like, this is my out. This is my last chance. Okay. Did you expect him to beat Holland? 
When he yes, came in. I, I yeah, picked I him on the show. Both picked him, yeah. Yeah, I was the only like one of the few people. I, I remember the takes leading up to that fight was like, "Oh my god, you guys are so stupid. Holland's gonna smoke him." And I was like, eh, "Hold on yeah. a minute." I liked him. I think a good amount. In yeah, and he fight. was an underdog, and, <laughs> and I liked him there. Here, I think you have first of all the age is a huge difference, and I get that like he doesn't show signs of age because he's you know blackletic and he's explosive and and he makes good reads and everything like that. But there was a point in time when you were looking at MVP like. Dude, this guy's one of the biggest frauds we've ever seen. When he gets taken down and he just can't get up off his back and, and he's low volume and guys just aren't dying and he's not fighting 40-year-old guys that are a foot shorter than him, life changes a lot. You know, Ian Gary is tall, as tall as MVP, if not taller. He's fast. He's dynamic. Every read that he makes is beautiful on the feet. And honestly, the only times that he gets rocked and hurt is when he just is like, in it trying to kill someone and just lose the sight of what's coming at him. And a lot of times it's these short arms that are just powerful. MVP just doesn't fill space. He's one off shots, big one explosion, leaping in and back out, leaping in and back out. You know, if Ian doesn't get chinned here, like maybe we do see the grappling wrinkle. Maybe, maybe that is a thing. And, and, and maybe not, maybe it is just a striking affair, but he knows how to fill the space. He legitimately is a really good striker. You don't have to like him. He's way younger. He's faster. He fills space, you know, at close to an even line. Like I had to play Ian Gary here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand why you're passionate with Gary, but I, I just kept, when I was taping this fight, I kept going back and forth in my head, and it's like, I, I don't know. I find it hard to really trust either guy in this matchup. I can't help but think it's going to be just a 15-minute point kickboxing match where maybe Gary does do more, like you said. That's He's probably the more likely of the two to potentially mix up the martial arts. I mean, he has the grappling. Everybody talks about, oh, Ian Gary's got this good uh, grappling game that he'll potentially get a submission, but he just always tends to strike with opponents. And if he's going to strike with MVP, man, I don't really want anything to do financially with this fight. And I just want to enjoy it because I, I honestly think MVP, you say Ian's good at filling up the space, but MVP makes it hard for uh, opponents to fill up the space because he's always just bouncing around with foot mo footwork and just lateral movement. And I just feel like Gary's maybe going to, he's going to try to do more, but I feel like he's going to have trouble finding MVP and it's just going to be uh, kind of a dull decision if I'm being honest. His legs there to be kicked all that the time. Is, that, that is true. <laughs> like Ian Gary can make this fight so easy for himself is just throw a jab and kick his leg nonstop. And Ian Gary's a really smart guy and a really good striker. I like. Where's Gary training these days? Brazil. Still okay. He he's still lives the, in Brazil. Is he with the boys? Yeah, he's done with Charles Oliveira. Okay. Um, man, there's some weird things to this. So Gary, we saw him come in Jordan Williams and get hurt. Yeah, he didn't get hurt as badly as I remember. Like I thought he was on death's door, and I was like, okay, he got wobbled, but yeah. it wasn't wasn't as bad. Um, and then he, man, the, the UFC has fed him. So after that, he fought Darian Weeks. It was fine, dude. Come on. Weeks is Weeks is one of those guys who's really good, but only fights when people fight him, and he's everything is defensive and countering and everything. Yeah, yeah. He really was a heavy bag in that fight. Yeah. Um. Then he fought Gabe Green. Who is very tough and has really good cardio, but he's a little bit better weeks. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's literally a one step up version of weeks. So we're that. Um, then he fought Keenan Song, who death killed him, and he came back from the depths and, and finished him. But that was that was dicey. Okay. Um. All right, Shab. All right. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez. He starts him. Solid. I mean, Ke Solid. Kelvin didn't finish him. Nope. Solid fight. Beat him up. Look good. And then the, the Neil Magny one was weird. It was last minute, weird replacement. All of this stuff happened. And then he just wouldn't finish and would kick him and run. And it was such a weird. He's an annoying cunt sometimes. And then he was like, after the fight, like, ah, I just didn't want to finish him. Yeah, it was a weird showing. And then, of course, we have the Jeff Neal fight, which he, it was a split decision. Um, which I, I, I don't, agree. I thought Gary won. You know what I mean? I didn't think it was that close, but whatever. Um, anyway. So I, I don't know that his level of competition is really amazing as a whole. You don't rate Jeff Neal. No, Jeff Neal I do. Jeff Neal I do. Um, but Jeff Neal is also 5'10 and a boxer. He doesn't, And he puts combinations together. He does put combinations together and Page doesn't. So then, you know, again, we, you, we've got Venom Page. 
off of his back, he's a turtle. But does, is Gary going to offensively wrestle? But he's a smart guy, and that's what he I could know. do. He's and got too much of an ego to wrestle. In his I, I, I think, I think so. his ego lives and dies with winning. I, yeah. I, I really do. He no, lives and right. dies with his wife. Yeah. I don't like that. Um, anyway, I think, I think it, I'm with Pierce. I think this is going to be a boring-ass fight. I think they're going to stare and stare and faint and move. Has and like, Ian Gary ever had a good fight, though? Like a fun fight to watch? Yeah, no, he's he's a he's a winner, not an exciting. Even his finishes are like, yeah, okay. And so then now, then it's literally the points of the calf kick and the little peppery stuff, or does Venom actually touch him? And he's probably going to hurt him if he can hurt hit him. And so now you're going vol when not a lot is going on. You're going volume on little calf kicks and a touch here and there versus like the bigger stuff to Venom. I would assume even if it's at a two to one when there's not a lot going on you hurt somebody once or twice and they're going to give around to him. Um, I, I kind of lean venom on this for just look, if, if, if you told me that Gary was going to wrestle him, I'm like done sold. I'm in because Gary can wrestle. He's got, but we also know how good of jujitsu Kevin Holland has. If Holland had not focused on striking and just focused on wrestling, he would have taken him down and submitted him. He has really good jujitsu. Um, you get an idiot who's not willing to do that. Um, and I think Venom is just still athletic. I think he's long, and and I think he's going to do enough shit in that arena with the crowd going and the big moments. Uh, I, I kind of like Venom here. Venom Page lost a boxing match to Mike Perry. Just, I just want to put that out there. That's very true. I think MVP just has a way of dragging guys into his type of fight. And, I mean, you said the Holland fight. I mean, Kevin said he was surprised by his speed, and I think he really threw him off how fast MVP can be in the cage. And I... I don't know. I think it's like you said, he has the more visually appealing shots. He's going to be making the crowd uh, more interested in his style. But yeah. I fight. think I think Ian Gary is an infinitely better fighter. And if he wanted, he could drag this to the ground and really win it. And I think he's, you know, I don't I don't think he's going to do that. And so then I'm flipping a coin on it. I will flip it with the white guy. What are you doing with your eyebrows over there, by the way? All right. Next up, we have Myra. <laughs> Uh, bueno Silva minus 102 versus Macy Chiasen minus 118. Chasson, man, come on. Chasson. I was, you know, I, I almost asked oui, Pierce. Oui. I almost asked Pierce to help me out there with that one, but I took a swing at it. All right, let's go. Again, I'll, I'll go on this one because I didn't tape it, so I'm gonna go with the American. She got big jugs though. Who? Oh, Myra Bueno Silva. Yeah, I know. And so I'm gonna go with her. She's dating. She's they're the cutest couple in MMA. Who's she dating? Uh, GDP. I, I love GDP. Who's that? I don't. Gloria DePaula. Oh, all right. I'm in. Get Lesin out. Hey, it's Pride Month. Let's go with uh, Myra Buena Gloria Silva. DePaula is, she's sick and she's Done. beautiful. Done. Sold. I'm going to have a drink to that. Uh, okay, well, fill us yeah, up. Yeah, bring, bring your glasses. Let's re up. I'm here. done. I'm done, actually. I don't want to. Want... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't really have a hot take on this fight. I just think MBS is a lot more mean and she's going to go for it more. And Chazon has always been someone that I've thought as, as a flake. And I just don't have a hot take on this fight. But the line, there was a lot of line movement in this fight. We saw Chazon open like plus 170, plus 160. Now she's the favorite, which I find interesting considering. I, I don't know. Macy Chazon is just not someone I would want to trust with my money. She seems like the type of person to be the victim of get your phone out let's bet on this fight live on the podcast wait wait, wait. Well, she's gonna be the victim of what i'm curious to hear the rest of that sentence uh yeah we'll leave she's gonna be triggered and um too many women are triggered these days let me look into the camera too many women are triggered these days what he meant to say was too many people are triggered these days she's gonna be the victim of two women in a relationship <laughs> lesbian power uh all right so we're going uh pride month over here Lesbian power. I, I, just, I'll, I'll just throw this in. I like MBS here. I, I think that Chasson, uh, she beat Penny Kinzad last time, took her down, choked her, whatever. Um, this is a much different matchup. MBS yeah. was actually doing really well in the first few rounds yeah. against Pennington, and I get it's Pennington, but Pennington's solid everywhere. Like, she does everything well yep. until she just run out of gas and, and kind of got beat to this. Chasson's cardio is not great. She always fades, always falls off a cliff, and MBS is mean, and she can strike and punch and talk shit. I like MBS. All right. What do we got? All right, next. Anthony Smith, plus 124 versus Roman Delizzi, minus 148. Hey, did I get that one, Pierce? 
Yeah, perfect. Sweet. Who wants to go? Brandon, you want to go? Yeah, I want to say this too. This is funny. So I don't follow, I don't watch any YouTube shows. Sometimes I watch Magic and Andrew's show. I, I, by the way, I said that we need to do a pod swap. <laughs> you and uh, Andrew Gombas. I know you love Andrew. I don't, who's that? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Th- 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 let me, let me, let me demonstrate how your guys' podcast would go. Hey, hey, you like this guy? Yeah, I like him. Okay. Next fight. And then me and Magic would be like, dude, the fucking conspiracy. This guy fell down the fucking alleyway and, and he fell into a sorcerer's stone. And that's why he's going to win this damn fight. It would be crazy. So we're going to do this someday. Uh, Taylor, two Done. cities. Um, I'm in. But uh, I, I say, so the only like, guy I really follow is like, I mean, I follow a few people. But when I say everybody on the podcast, when I'm like, everybody's on this guy, I literally only mean Clint because that's the <laughs> only guy that I follow. And I don't watch any other shows or anything. So I'm like, man, everybody's on Myra Buena Silva. It's just one guy. That's it. <laughs> um, all right. Roman Glidze, Anthony Smith. Um, I, I'm going Anthony Smith on this one. I, I just, I hate this fight just in general. Glidze is an idiot. Although I have heard a ton of ramblings and rumblings at the gym at Extreme, that the dude wins a ton of rounds in sparring against really good guys, and he's always doing really well. Um, he's small. His striking's not good. It's big overhands and random stuff. And, you know, I don't think he's going to gas out so hard in a three-round fight. But Anthony Smith, good job. Good jiu-jitsu. He's crafty. He's getting better. He's been fighting hard against guys that are really good for a little while now. Honestly, he's looked better later in his career than he did earlier in his career. He's a bigger guy. He's the, not the one on short notice. Um, I don't think I'm going to have action on the fight. but And I hate to just join in the crowd and be with everybody else, but I think Anthony Smith's going to win this fight. Well, I think they're both on. Are they both not on short notice? Anthony was already... Kind of short. They're notice. all Let, like, this, this is, is a wild this, fight. This, yeah. this fight and... started with like Jamal Brandon Hill and Kamuela in LFA <laughs> and somehow materialized to these two fight. Like neither of these two are even on the card. And they just, I, who the fuck knows how this came about? Um, a lot of cancellations later were here. Uh, I'm on Dolides on this. Um, one, well, actually, do, I have a question. Do you guys know if Dolides is permanently moving to 205 or this is a one-off? I would assume it's a one-off. He's okay. not that big, and he just made the career move back down. Okay, exactly. That's what I thought. So him going up leads me to believe he's in shape, and he sees something or knows something that he's like, all right, I, I like this fight for me stylistically. So uh, he's got power. He kicks hard. He's got good power. We know he has good jujitsu. So I, I don't see Anthony Smith triangling him from the bottom. No, or, no, no. Right? You know what I mean? Even if he, but Dolides is a fucking idiot. So he might do some dumb shit and end up on his back. And I think he's going to be just fine attacking leg locks coming up, whatever. So I, don't, I think jujitsu, Dolides is going to be fine. Power is going to Dolides all day long. Speed is going to Dolides. I think Anthony Smith has a good jab, but as a whole, I think he's a relatively slower person. The jab is just, you know, straight whatever. Um, but where I think Dolides is going to win this is in a boring um, Liani Steropoli or whatever the hell his name is and just grab him and hold and push him against the fence and be able to control the position and get a paycheck. So I don't, it, it could look the Anthony Smith and Roman Dolides can throw down and they can both have some exciting fights. Um, give me the power. Give me the youth. Give me the dynamic athleticism of Roman Dolides all day long. I think his cardio is better than like a Vitor Petrino's. He's not going to gas out and do as much dumb shit. Petrino, we didn't see him go. Honestly, Petrino's cardio is good. Um, we didn't see him go deep. He got choked yeah, out of oh, the yeah, first. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he. Dolides isn't getting choked out. Um, I changed my pick. I'm going with you. Like, I'm going uh, with Dolides. Yeah, I, I think the finishing power can absolutely go Dolides by he can go the nuclear option. But honestly, I think he can grab him, push him against the fence, and, and three-round him there if you want. So I, I like Dolides here kind of by a decent amount. Um, I, I actually thought, was it Marvin Vittori that he lost to? Um, say Imovov last fight. Is that what you were Imovov. Well, Imovov, 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 Imovov and Vittori. He should have beat Vittori. I thought he won. It was, I thought close, he, it was close. I thought he won in the Vittori fight. Um, Imovov, dude, Imovov has just leveled the fuck up. Um, but – I, I don't think I, I think if Imavov and Anthony Smith fight at any weight on the planet, I think Imavov lights them up. So I, I like the leads here. Yeah, I, I honestly don't. I'm not as passionate as you when it comes to this fight, but it, it just honestly comes down to is Dalita going to look to clinch and grapple? Because that's obviously the path to least resistance. We see Anthony Smith. He's 
honestly a fish off his back if you can get him there. And my issue with that is I'm struggling to feel confident with saying Dalidze is going to do the smart thing here. I mean, even if they do throw down, like you said, Santino, I Anthony Smith is probably the one that is the least durable of the two. He does get hurt a lot. We saw in the Ryan Spann fight, saw in the Cleo Roundtree fight. We've seen a lot of fights. He's getting hurt. So, I mean, it, based off of that, I, I could see why we think Dalidze is going to win. But, I mean, I'll side with Dalidze, but I'm not against uh, – maybe Smith can just put on a vet performance and just jab and low kick because Dalidze is not necessarily someone I trust at range if this is going to be a striking match. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, Co-main, I think this will be a fun one. Brian Ortega, plus 120 versus Diego Lopez, minus 142. Who wants to go on this? You did a r- whole write-up for this last week, so I feel like... Yeah, I read like a five-page essay on this one. <laughs> there was a long... I didn't realize how long it was as I was going. It was long. Um, but I love this fight, and I really was excited about it. And so I went hard in the paint. Okay, well, what you got? So what if you said all that and then just like... But you have to get behind the paywall first. Yeah. <laughs> sign up yeah. for Fight Chalk. Sign yeah. up for yeah. Bet Online. Go, yeah, go to Bet Online. Go to Fight Chalk. Go to Patreon. Go to, for twenty nine ninety nine. You too can have. So, um, on paper, this fight is very similar. You know, two Mexican guys fighting. Love it. That's it. Um, they're about the Remember same. Remember the Alamo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they're about the same height these guys are jujitsu guys like you kind of uh, all things on paper lead to you would describe them as very similarly in a lot of areas um brian ortega is not overly fast like he's just not a fast guy he's kind of there but he has a lot longer he's huge like he was out here uh him and tracy cortez were in a relationship for a long time really they so we spent a lot of time with Ortega. Um, he, you know, I mean, he's just a big dude. He's like, I'm five ten and a half, and he's probably an inch, half an inch taller than I am. I think like he's long. I mean, he's just a big dude. But Diego Lopez is a big dude as well. The guys are. I think I would guess that Ortega has a much longer reach than Lopez because I've seen them both, and, and Ortega's arms just seem like ape arms to me. But. Um, <clears throat> Ortega has a 69 inch reach and Lopez 72 and a half. So they also Ooh. say that Zombie is 5'7 on. Yeah. So I, I don't buy it Did for you a second. come with the counter facts to him. No, yeah, I don't buy it. I know they say that. I don't buy it for a second. Um, <laughs> that was hilarious. They timing. also, yeah, I know. I just don't buy it. So it, you could, you could say his reach is 500 or two. I'm like, it's, I don't care. It's longer. Um, Ortega is just fucking durable, man. He's durable. He's getting less durable. He's getting less durable. But one thing that Ortega does well is, first of all, he'll switch stances and he'll he'll move. Um, he's going to lose the boxing fight early. All right. One thing that we've seen out of Lopez is is a really great right uppercut. He loves to throw that in the pocket. He's landing that. We saw that he landed quite a bit on Nate Richardson before he got to the UFC. We saw him land it on uh, Sadiq. We've seen him land it you know, quite a bit. I think that's his his best punch is right uppercut. He's hitting guys who are five seven, five eight with that right uppercut. Hitting somebody the same height is not going to generate the same power. They're not going to duck into it as much. So there's that. The other thing is that we don't re- we haven't seen Diego go past the first round um, in the UFC. Really, I, I mean, in a win, like we saw him come up short notice, fought his ass off, got tired, but that fight was on super super short notice, um, and he threw some really good submissions. But is he going to submit Ortega? You know what I mean? So, so you kind of assume the answer is no. He's willing to jump off of his back. He will play off of his back. I don't think that's a good idea. He definitely has a speed advantage, and he comes for fury right out. But again, I mean, I think he's got to finish Ortega in round one, or Ortega will grab you. His wrestling has never been phenomenal, but it's gotten a lot better. He's going in, and he will punch his way into the clinch. And I think that Ortega's clinch is his best weapon standing. He, he actually has good dirty boxing in there, good elbows and good knees. And we've seen that on numerous occasions, him landing those shots in the clinch and then hurting people. But, but the real issue is that if he gets on top, if Brian Ortega gets on top of you, do, I mean, it looks like he is a cinder block. Like he, I don't know that you could move that dude off of you. Him on top, I think he's going to any ground and pounds. He's going to ground and pound. He's going to do it. How fun will that be to watch? Uh, Diego Lopez on the bottom playing his jiu-jitsu versus Ortega on top. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait. I hope this. I hope it plays out that way. Because 
Lopez's mm. jiu-jitsu, we, we talk about purple belt jiu-jitsu versus black belt jiu-jitsu, but Lopez is a different category. He's a black belt jiu-jitsu that's tricky as shit and always throwing stuff up. Yes. Will be awesome. The issue, the, not the issue, the thing with him is he's really fast and dynamic, and he has hips on a swivel. And so his hips are throwing up arm bars, triangles, omoplatas like crazy. The issue, though, is he will just keep rotating through triangle armbar Oma Plata, and he doesn't go to get up. He doesn't try to get up. He stays off his back too much. And if he stays on his back against Ortega, I think you've basically said, hey, I want to lose this round or lose this fight because I, I don't think that's a winning way. Um, I don't think his takedowns are great. We've seen him, I think it was Gavin Tucker, where he jumped triangle on the way down into the takedown. So he's so willing, so confident in his jujitsu off of his back. There's that. Now, standing, he can hurt Brian, okay? He can absolutely hurt Brian because he has the speed to do it. But Brian, again, the dude is just durable as shit, and he won't die. Again, we've seen him get rocked recently, and we've definitely seen some chinks in that so armor. Yeah, year though. You know, like, yes. that's, a, that's a guy. Now, rumor has it that Lopez is knocking out sparring partners left and right, just really dropping everyone because he didn't do a lot of that pre UFC. He did not do a lot of that pre UFC. And, um, but so apparently he's dropping people just like crazy. Um, I, I've got to go with initially. Um, I was actually talking with his manager, uh, Lopez's manager. And I said, they're like, Hey, what do you think about this fight? A lot of people are like, Oh, I think Brian wins this fight. I think it's a bad fight for Lopez, blah, blah, blah. Brian's really tough, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, I actually like Lopez. I, I said, I think he's a better boxer. I think he's faster. Um, and I think a lot of the jujitsu will be nullified. But then after watching tape, I think the key here, I think there's two keys to this fight. If Lopez can't finish in round one, does he death gas? Does he start jumping for stuff? We saw, dude, tell me that you guys have seen Joe Anderson Brito just take him down and ground and pound him like not. I mean, dude, that was, yeah. that was an easy fight for Brito. And are we thinking that Ortega can't do something similar? I would say, though, Brito is a lot more aggro and a lot stronger, and he's a lot more explosive. A hundred percent. And he will blast double versus Ortega, who's going to clinch and go. Just slowly try to hang yeah. on you until you fall. So um, I love this fight. I love this matchup. All things considered, I think that if Brian gets on top, that's a really – not only on top, in the clinch. I think if he gets a hold of him, I think any time they're touching, I think Brian is going to be winning those that, that battle. Um, and then cardio durability factor, all of that. So I, I lean Ortega on this. Um, look, man, Lopez is great. He, he's he, he's the dude right now. If, if you talk about aura, all the aura that dude has. He's been the easiest aura bet of recent memory. It's insane. And every fight is like even money. And, you know, that said though, so, so – and then the last thing, I, I've gone way too long on this. Uh, his last fight against Sadiq, that is just a solid win. Sadiq is phenomenal. Solid win. There's zero asterisks right there. His two previous fights are to Gavin Tucker and to Pat Sabatini. Two grapplers who cannot strike their way to save their lives. That, um, that's not true. <clears throat> Gavin was a good striker. In his heyday, was a good he striker. He was, but he's, he's older now. He was 37 at the time. I get it. He's and had 37 a long at layoff. the time. Um, he, I think Gavin went in. And Gavin's a guy who we've talked to a, a good amount. He watches a lot of film. I think he was like, I'll take this guy down. And I'm going to just beat him up on top. I watched Brito do it. I'm good. And then uh, Lopez jumped triangle and really just <laughs> threw it all, all in a wrench. Um, but uh, I like Ortega here. I think it's a very competitive fight, and it could go every which way there is. But talking about waist win, just breaking stuff down, if Ortega's chin can hold up, I like Ortega. Yeah, I think, I mean... There's only so much we can talk about now. You covered all the yeah, bases. Yeah, I went hard fight. in it, you guys. Sorry. So, you know, give, give me your thoughts. I mean, as someone who likes to bet, I mean, I feel like we're talking about, because it's before the fight. So pre-bet, I feel like you have to side with Lopez because a lot of, like, Ortega's path is, I don't think he's going to find takedowns early. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of his fights. I mean, you look at the Yair fight, he got dropped early. And I feel like this is three rounds, correct? Not five? I believe so. Three rounds, yeah. I can I, check, yeah. I yeah. believe that plays into Diego's favor, but I, I've always felt like people disrespected his hands because everybody calls him like a BJJ guy, but his I honestly... His hands are phenomenal. His boxing is his best aspect of his game, if you ask me. And, I mean, I think he's going to probably hurt Ortega early, but it comes down to, like, we've only seen so much from Diego since the Masvidal fight, so you can only take so much away from what he's been doing. But 
I think pre-fight, I'm going to side with the guy that's probably hits harder and is more dangerous when the fight starts. And then maybe after the first round, maybe look to play Ortega as that's most of his fights is. He's kind of known for that. He's a Homer Simpson and he'll he'll continue pushing forward and then he just breaks guys or finds opportunistic subs, which is a possibility here. But pre-fight, I'm going to side with Lopez. Always bet on Aura. All right. Yeah, I want nothing to do with this fight. I, I, this is one fight I literally just want to watch. I think yeah. I'm with you. I think I like Ortega to break him down late. Because you have a guy that pulls guard and you, you have a guy that is so confident and so faithful in that, at some point, if he can't put Ortega away, which is, again, extremely hard to do, that dude's willing to die in the cage. He's just willing to die straight up. Um, at some point, he's going to get top time, whether it's his takedown or it's a guard pull. And then it's a, a different story. Um, yeah, I, I don't want a lot to do with this. I just want to watch it. But I think I like Ortega here, too. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Main event time. But first, promo. Promo? Pierce, Pierce, would you like to yeah, give us a Yeah, give us a yeah, if promo. you guys want to see real-time odds and see top cappers and what their picks are, make sure you subscribe to Fight Chalk. And they also have uh, tape for fights if you guys are interested. So we have a Actually, Fight Chalk package. is free. You don't have to subscribe. Did I forget Everything to say that it is free and you don't have Just to pay show up and, and peruse. Way to cut a promo, dude. Way to cut a promo. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to Fight Chalk. And I'll let you take over, Gabe, with the matchup. Hey, also, you guys, we have uh, BetMGM as well. So they're sponsoring the pod. Um, they've got a lot of good promos. I'll put the most recent promo up in the show notes right now. Uh, one thing that they are doing is risk-free bets. So if you lose money up to a certain amount, I'll put it in the promo down. I, I just don't know off the top of my head. Basically, they're going to give you all of that money back in free bets if you sign up with BetMGM. So basically what you're saying is if I bet the house on Carlos Hernandez, I'll get my house back if it loses. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Your house will get repoed, but then they'll unrepo it. Just got to wait 60 days for the 60 process. 60 days. You have uh, anything to plug? You got anything? Yeah, what are you doing these days? Where, where can people find you uh, on social media, Pierce? Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, just my name, Pierce.Hager. And you can find me at the local 7-Eleven asking for some money. Okay, I like that. I like that. It's always fun. All right. I didn't have anything to promote, guys. It's cool. No, yeah, we, we, no, I, I we know. It's, it's we know. cool. I didn't no, have anything. Brandon, Brandon, you, no, you got no. something? No, no, it's okay, man. We'll just no, go no, to no, the next we, we got time. No, yeah, it's okay. Let's just I go mean, to the next I mean, if event. you're going to be a little <laughs> sad about it, then you can you can promote too. Uh, no, let's go to the main event. Okay. Main event. All right. Okay, so I do want to promote. <laughs> Bro, the camera's cut on you now, man. You yeah, go. It's, it's go with it. All right, in the main event, we have Alex Pajeda, minus 142 versus Yuri Prohaska at plus 120. Man, my brother scared me with this one. He sent me a, a DM, and it was just a picture of Alex Pajeda in black and white, and in red letters, it just said injured. And I was like, no, dude, this card is cursed. And then underneath it said injured from carrying the entire UFC on his back. And I was like, that's funny, man. But, dude, he's a gangster. Coming he through again. Always. So if you guys are out there, please send Kamwala random injured and then with yes. a funny caption at the bottom just on every matchup you can possibly find. I love it. I actually <laughs> love it. Uh, Pierce, man of the hour. Yeah, you picked me to close out uh, the fight that I have the least amount of thoughts on. Okay. So, well, hey, that's fine. We all. Have that's why you're going first. We yeah. end with a bang. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... I need to watch back more on these guys, but I mean, I, we saw the first fight. I mean, the story of that fight was really just Poetons calf kicks. And yeah, we did see Yuri get uh, takedowns, which was a bit surprising considering that's not really Yuri's game, but I, I don't have any strong takes. I think Alex Pereira is someone I tried fading in the past with uh, Yuri the first time in Jamal Hill. I planted my flag on that one and did not look so good in that one. That's It was a close fight. Yeah. yeah, we'll get him next time, Jamal. But yeah, I, I don't really have a hot take, but I just think go with the guy that beat him already. Calling Jamal the fat hood boxer is just so funny to oh me. My gosh, and he man. gets so mad about everything too, but just fat hood boxer. Oh, <laughs> you were pretty on point with that. I mean, that was, <laughs> give me, let, let's go. Give me your thoughts. I, I think I like Jerry here. Um, Jerry was winning a lot of minutes in the first fight. I, I really like Alex. Like his persona, his personality, like just everything about him is awesome. Seeing so much sparring footage of him is really cool. He records everything and then he goes and spars with these boxers and man, his just, I, okay. I was watching him spar with a kid the other day and the kid, he's being so nice to the kid, but his reflexes just seeing, I, I guess Kamala was like sparring with uh, you today, watching you and, and Tracy Cortez spar. 
there was not a thing she could do because every read you just made so perfectly and it doesn't even open up an opportunity for her to, to do anything. And that every time I spar with you, that's how I feel. So watching this kid, Alex is letting the kid work, but he's like seeing everything that the kid's going to do way before it's even done. And sometimes, you know, I've been like, man, Alex is so basic and he just, you know, chin up and hands down so he can draw you in and throw the big hook. But his game is really a lot more than that. We saw that in the hill fight, like everything he was doing, jab to the body, jab to the body, low kick, jab to the body and just setting it up. And you just kind of watch the beginning of that fight and go, it's coming soon. Like that's, it's, it's, it's on the way it's coming, but man, Jerry brings chaos and Alex is older. Alex got, uh, a button chin sometimes it's just hard for people to find it but once they do find it it happens and jerry is willing to to die in there he's willing to go through hell the stoppage the first time was a bit interesting i think jerry's probably got better cardio i think he's got the grappling upside i think at any point either one of them can dead the other one at, at any point um i think jerry's a little bit younger and it just feels like both these guys got aura you know it's, it's hard to say one or the other one doesn't have it so I think in this, and there was some rumors of, you know, of uh, Alex's toe being injured, which, you know, he'll put that to the side for a huge title fight. It, it won't make a difference. But I think in this matchup, I'm going to go with uh, Jerry. I'm on the Jerry train as well. And I think we've been on, I hate it, probably on every fight he's had. You know what I mean? Against the Jamal Hill. Boxer. Yeah, against a fat hood boxer, against... Um, you know, most of them were, were the first Jerry fight. I think we're on him and uh, on Alex. And, but yeah, there's something about the comeback of Jerry in the last fight was really impressive. He, he looked good. Um, I think Jerry's a weirdo. He spent about a month with us in fight ready. And I forgot about that. Super nice guy, man. Just, just, just strange. Um, calf kicks are definitely a thing. But I think he'll probably slightly adjust them. I think that I doubt it. Man. He I really think they're doesn't. gonna be a thing. But if they're like one out of ten, ten being the worst, I think last time they were a ten bad. I think they'll be like an eight bad this time. So I, I think he'll probably <laughs> at least be aware of them. Maybe switch stances more, which might just t negate that the grappling a little bit. Uh, I, I think it just comes down to age, and, and eventually, I Jerry's only thirty one. Yeah, and that's the thing is I think with age. I think Alex is getting older. That chin has been hit a lot. Uh, you said you can find the button. I, I think there, this is not even a analysis. It just seems like at some point, some of these guys with the aura have got to just get stopped. Um, and I could really see Jerry finding the chin and stopping him this time. So it's, it's not, not even a technical thing. It just seems like. Jerry, it just seems kind of like Jerry's time has come. It, it is. How like, can Jerry ever be a technical thing? Because yeah. he's just so, it, it's yep. just so random. He literally just goes with the flow and finds yep. what's open. Spinning shit, flying knees. Like, it, it just seems like something's gonna, I don't know. It, like you said, the toe thing. Um, Pareto has been all over everything these days. And and these guys, you know, uh, heroes fall eventually. And lots of travel, lots of stuff outside of the UFC. Yep. Dude's a superstar now and he's yeah. made a ton of money. Isn't yeah. it interesting that the dude who pulled out of the card, Conor McGregor, pulled out with a toe injury, and the dude who's stepping in is has... stepping in with a toe injury? Uh, Levels uh. this game. Dude, you're the biggest Conor fan of all time. I have a love hate, man. I, I have a love hate. Come on. No, you mimicked dude, your, dude, you mimicked your walk after. You walk around <laughs> town still no, just bro, like still him. Still swinging your arms. <laughs> no, no. We have a similar build, so there are a lot of takeaways like earlier on in my career, like when I turned, I uh, probably like, two, three fights in my pro career that I took from him. We both have a 75 inch reach. And I like the way that he measured his distance. And uh, I like the way that he marketed fights back then. But I, I, I don't think that explain the beard. What do you mean? Oh, you think, you think that I grew, I grew a beard because Connor, I'm not telling you me you didn't. didn't. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I didn't either. <laughs> no, bro. But they said that if you have a beard, you're like, your chin is like, what? 30% stronger. More like protected. That? There's more, more padding. I hope that, uh, Poetan wins this fight. I'm doing a Poetan painting. It's a big one. It's going to be two feet by four feet. And I thought about it earlier. And I'm like, dude, I'm about, to, I'm about to do this painting. What if he loses, man? I'm yeah, but up. can are you just going to hang that on your wall? Or what are you going to do with that painting? No, no, I'm going to be selling it. So I, I'm going to post it on my Instagram if somebody wants it. They What's can your DM Instagram? Me. It's the Jawaiian. The Jawaiian. It's like Hawaiian with a J. The Jawaiian. It doesn't make any sense to me, but he's going to have a badass fucking painting up there. 
So last time, so it is for sale. It is for sale. That he's going to sell one of you. It's one for one, one on one. So for UFC 300, um, so there's this company that does like signed T-shirts, custom artwork with the signed T-shirts from the fighter, right? And so they headlined UFC 300. I bought one of the signed Alex Pereira T-shirts. It was like weird. Honestly, the art's kind of shitty. But he signed it, and it was only 300 of them made. So I was like, all right, I'm going to buy one. It was expensive. It was like 280 bucks or something like that. It just came to me like a week ago. He's already fighting again by the time the shirt actually came in. Uh, so interesting. Anyways. Uh, this is way past my bedtime. We're all so tired. Like oh We're trying gosh. to mask this. We're all so tired. Pierce might be the only one not tired. Well, he's young. He has, oh, I, I got yeah, school tomorrow, energy. man. I got a math Yeah, test. he's – my kids – so my wife is out of town. It's 10, 32, and my children are either passed out on the couch or still awake because I'm in here doing this. So I'm going to go tuck them in, and uh, yeah, I'll tuck Pearson as well. All four of and, us are going to uh, go yeah, tuck in. Everyone's going to go get, children. You know, give some warm milk, you brush your teeth, and then we'll, we'll all go night-night. So uh, that's it. Next time, boys.